It's football night in Jacksonville as the Monterey Steel cross the border and will try to cage the Sharks and stay within striking distance in the NAL standings. On Star Wars night at Veterans Memorial Arena, can the Sharks stay on target and use the force to cage Steel? It's NAL Arena football next on CW17. Jacksonville, Florida, where tonight the hometown Sharks look to stay on top and unbeaten in the National Arena League as they take on the Monterey Steel. Glad to have you along with us here inside Veterans Memorial Arena as Jacksonville looks to move to 8-0, taking on Monterey for the second of three times here in the regular season. Joined by Saleh Key, I am Xander Keenan. We're glad to have you along with us. As Saleh, a couple of weeks ago, the Sharks went down to Monterey and came away with a big 60-21 victory. But it'll be no easy task as Jacksonville's got a target on its back tonight. Absolutely. With Monterey, you know, sitting at 4-2 and two now, knowing that they have to play him a second time, or I mean, just coming back in the Shark Tank, they know they, they got their cut, work, uh, they got their work cut out for him. Well, one of the keys for the Sharks tonight is the play of quarterback Damian Fleming stepping into the starting role with the injury to Tommy Grady. Fleming has led the Sharks to back-to-back -back wins, but it's not just his passing ability, Saleh. He is a dual threat with the football. Absolutely. The guy is versatile. You know, with Tommy Grady, he's a pocket passer where he's able to sit back and get his, you know, his receivers open. Being versatile in Fleming, he's able to run. Obviously, having 500 yards almost total this season just on the ground, you can tell he's, he's a weapon to, uh, to be working with. It's not just Fleming, though, that can run the football for the Sharks because about once a game, you know the lawnmower's getting started up in midfield when big fullback Derek Ross gets the football in his hands. That's right, big boss Ross. I mean, anytime you get close to that red zone, five yards or within, you know, be counting on Ross to make the big plays there. And the Sharks also have a unique scoring threat, not just Fleming, the receivers, and Derek Ross. Kicker Nick Belcher has proved to be a dangerous weapon with his ability to score from really any point on the field. Right, and I tell you what, kickers don't normally get a lot of love, but in this game now, with him being so versatile again, just like Fleming, he's able to score more than just on a field goal. He's able to drop the deuce, as they say, as far as hitting uh, uh, between the field goals there on kickoff. But it's not just Jacksonville that comes in tonight's matchup with talent. Monterey features a slew of former Sharks, one of them re big receiver, London Crawford. That's right. Talking about a big target there. He is a guy to watch. Obviously, coming back here in his own familiar uh, setting, he's ready to make some big plays as well. Yeah, between London Crawford, Marty Gilliard, Jacoby Jones, Monterey certainly has a whole bunch of receivers that they can throw at Jacksonville. Lots of talented players on defense as well for the steal. So we'll see how the Sharks handle that challenge tonight, Saleh. This team has been unstoppable so far this year. What's the biggest key to taking down Monterey tonight? I tell you what, just stick with what they've been doing the whole season. I mean, obviously, the coaches are putting a great game plan in place for them. As far as, uh, you know, just executing, just continue to, to execute plays and continue that momentum. Yes, that Jacksonville defense has not allowed more than 48 points in any game this season. We'll see if the Sharks can do the same again tonight as they host the Steel. Back for more in just a moment. We're getting you set for Jacksonville Sharks football right here on CW17. Tonight's presentation of Jacksonville Sharks football is brought to you by Subaru. By Moe Southwest Grill. Welcome to Moe. By Emerson's, the leader in sanitation. By Visit Jacksonville, where Florida begins. And by Baptist Health. Brought to you by Dick's Wings and Grill.
Welcome back to Jacksonville, where the Sharks are getting set to host the Monterey Steel here in National Arena League action. Jacksonville atop the NL standings at 7-0. Monterey, though, in striking distance at 4-2. He is Saleh Key. I am Xander Keen. The Sharks didn't play last week. Took down the Corpus Christi Rage by a score of 71-6 two weeks ago. But Saleh, when you're coming off a of bye week, what's the focus to try and get back at it without losing any momentum? You know, mental reps. Continually, continuing to watch, you know, uh, previous film and putting a game plan together. That's pretty much it there, Xander. And the Sharks have been able to handle everything that opponents have thrown at them this season. We talked about it just before the break. Jacksonville has not allowed 50 points in any game this season. The last four weeks, they have held their opponents under 30 points. The defense firing at all cylinders, and that's despite losing Marvin Ross and his eight picks. Talented Javari Gorman, they're both in the CFL, but this Sharks team has not missed a beat. Absolutely, I mean, as you can see uh, with Highland back there as well, you know, they got a bunch of DBs back there that can just add to the defensive uh, skill. And up front, the Sharks get after it as well. Jeremiah Price, Dale Pearson, those guys coming off the edge, some pressure up the middle too. I mean, it's really, that blend between the DBs and the front four, everything's got to be on point and combined to really give the, the kind of defensive effort the Sharks have had this season. Absolutely. It starts all up front first. The more pressure you get on that quarterback, at least back uh, to the linebackers there, obviously putting the, you know, big plays in the DB's hands. As we mentioned, the Sharks at 7-0, they are atop the National Arena League standings here in the second half of the regular season in Monterey there in third place at 4-2 Sale. This is a matchup between the two top scoring defenses in the NIL. Right, I mean, you, we're going to see a lot of defense today, I can tell you that. You know, both, like you said, top two in the league. It, you know, it's going to be a great test for our offense and obviously their offense as well. Columbus gained some ground on Monterey with a win a couple weeks ago. But look at there, 6-1, and one, the Lehigh Valley Seahawks, Steelhawks. Now, Jacksonville already beat Lehigh Valley about a month ago, but you can't slip up. Even though you're undefeated, you've been handling your business. When there is a team right there behind you in one game, it puts that pressure on, but also maybe helps you focus a little bit, knowing that you can't make any mistakes. Absolutely. It's really easy to get comfortable when you're, you know, you're undefeated throughout the season. So, you know, all I say is, you know, continue to do what they're supposed to do, and everything will fall in place. As we mentioned, the Sharks beat Monterey 60-21. to 21. Last time these two teams matched up, now that was the game Tommy Grady got injured. Damian Fleming stepped into that one, threw three touchdowns, and he's been lights out ever since. So we'll see if the Sharks can rely on Fleming the way they have been here tonight. We are just a few minutes away from kickoff here in Jacksonville. So we'll step aside but stay here as we take a listen to the presentation of our national anthem. Mexicanos al cielo la guerra, en la cero a prestar y el bridón, y retiemble en su centro la tierra al sonoro rugir del cañón, y retiemble en su centro la tierra al sonoro rugir del cañón. Chiño patria, tú sienes de oliva, de la paz del arcángel divino, que en el cielo tu eterno destino por el dedo de Dios escribió. Mas si es un extraño enemigo, profanar con su planta tu suelo, pienso patria querida que el cielo, un soldado en cada hijo te dio. Un soldado en cada hijo te dio. Mexicanos al grito de guerra, en la cero a prestar y el bridón. Y retiemble en su centro la tierra, al sonoro rugir del cañón. Y retiemble en su centro la tierra, al sonoro rugir del cañón. Ladies and gentlemen, please remain standing and gentlemen, please move your hands as we are on our bed. Also, we are touching home and abroad with a presentation of tonight's host. 
The coach for this evening's game are being presented by the Bucks Island Command Cover Barber. Rousing renditions of both the Mexican and American national anthems as we are minutes away from football. And you got to imagine, Sully, this is going to be a motivated Monterey team. The Steel won their first four games really in emphatic fashion. Look to be right up there with Jacksonville among the top teams in the National Arena League. Now, they are in third place, but they've lost their last two games by 30 or more points. And you got to imagine that, you know, coming on the road, coming here to Jacksonville with so many former Sharks on their roster that... Monterey is going to be a motivated squad here in tonight's game. You're right, Xander. They're going to be a determined team. Uh, I mean, what we're going to see today, you know, the last meeting they had, obviously, it was a blowout. You know, they're coming in. You know, they want to prove themselves. And in order to get the five and two, they got to get through the Sharks. So if this is your first time tuning into NAL football, we'll take a look at some of the unique rules that make this game what it is. Of course, the field only 50 yards long with eight-yard end zones. The goalposts, they're narrow and they're high. The crossbar 15 feet off the ground. Remember, one wide receiver moving in high motion going forward at the snap. And take a look at that scoring line right there. Again, six points for a touchdown. You can go for one or two. You can drop kick for an extra point. And remember, you can go for the deuce. A kickoff that goes through the uprights is worth two points in the kicking team. Also, if the kick returner gets tackled in the end zone, that's called an uno, and that's one point for the kicking team. So games that ordinarily look, might look like they're out of hand are not so much because you can score essentially 10 points in one possession, Saleh, and make up some ground really quickly. You're right, Xander. Even with Nick Belcher, we've seen him kick you know, the deuce stare through the, uh, the uprights plenty of times. Be ready to see some today. All right, let's welcome in the third member of our broadcast team as Reagan is down on the field with some more information about tonight's special Star Wars night jerseys. Hi, I'm here with Jeff Bushy, the operating manager. And what goes into this theme, Star Wars, and how do you go about that process? Well, you know, it's a big process, really. Uh, you have to get approval of Lucas Films. And so it's about a three or four month process. And there's some guidelines you have to do. Like tonight, we have Darth Vader in our jersey. We're going to auction them off for Vetix tonight. But you can't mix characters from different movies or different like genres. Like the First Order can't be with the old, you know, um, Empire and Rebellion characters and so forth. So they have, there's an approval process with the artwork, and it's a lengthy thing. But we're glad we have it. We think our jerseys are awesome tonight. Done in the Darth Vader um, uh, graphics, and we're very proud of it. And we're excited tonight to, to raise a bunch of money for Vetix. 
And say you go and op, uh, auction them off after the game, how's that go? Yes, yeah, so last week, we had our veterans, our military appreciation nights, we did over $20,000 to win the Veteran Tickets Foundation. I think we can break that record tonight, and our fans are great supporting the military here in Jacksonville. I think we'll hopefully get like $25,000 tonight to get the vet ticks, uh, because, listen, Star Wars is an iconic movie franchise, and everybody loves it. So it's a pretty big night. All right, perfect, Xander, back up to you. All right, thanks a lot, Reagan. Saleh, just a couple of moments away from kickoff. Great crowd on hand. A fun night. Star Wars night is one of the many great themes. You know, as a former Sharks player, we've talked about this all season long. It's not just the action on the field that gets you pumped up, but it's the, the fans, the theme nights, the way that everyone gets into it. Just the overall experience is phenomenal. It'll be a great night for football here. You're right, Sander. It is the experience. I mean, you can tell just by all the smiles. You see all the kids out here participating at the theme. You know, as far as, uh, the, you know, the weeks in the past there, you know, it's a great, it's a great time. So Jacksonville won the toss. They deferred to the second half, and so they will be kicking off to open tonight's game. Keep that in the back of your mind because as we approach halftime, Jacksonville will know that they will get the third quarter kickoff or at least force Monterey to maybe try an onside kick. But a long way until we get to there, Sully. We'll see if Nick Belcher goes for the deuce to open this one or if he'll just kick the ball away to the talented Jacoby Jones. That's right. I wouldn't be surprised if they go for it right now here, Xander. Rally towels being waved throughout Veterans Memorial Arena. We are underway as Belcher goes for the deuce, and he misses just wide to the right. So that's a touchback, and the football will come all the way out to the 20-yard line. So Monterey will be set up in a good position to open tonight's contest. Darwin Pittman gets the start at quarterback tonight for Monterey. Pittman saw some action in the Steels last game. Casey Peters was the starting quarterback for most of the year. But it is Darwin Pittman under center. As Monterey lines up in a rarely seen shotgun set to open the game with London Crawford in high motion. Pittman under pressure immediately, fires it up, and it's almost intercepted by Eric McIntosh. Wow, great pressure on that defensive line there, getting in the way of that quarterback. Obviously, you can tell, once you put a lot of pressure on that quarterback, disrupt them a little bit, it's going to make that pass down the field hard to, hard to throw. Second and 10, first possession of the game. Monterey lines up with London Crawford in high motion yet again, coming around to join the other two receivers. Quick pass out to Crawford, heading to the right corner. Gets forced to the boards by McIntosh after a gain of about four. And that's the kind of play that both teams are happy with. Monterey gets some yards. Jacksonville keeps him in a third down and long. This will be third and six from the 24-yard line. Out of the shotgun, Pittman again on third down, fires deep, and that one incomplete as his receiver goes over the wall. And that brings up a very key play early on in this contest, LA. Fourth down, and a chance for Jacksonville to get off the field with a stop right away. That's what we are talking about before. This is going to be a great defensive game here, Xander. Look at the Sharks here to stop him. Another look at that one. The throw is on target, but as you know very well, the wall's always undefeated. Fourth down and six, Pittman loops it deep, and that one is up and picked off in the end zone. Jacksonville gets the stop that it needed as Mishai Robinson Gets a pick, and Jacksonville takes over after the early turnover. Misha Robinson, the pit bull, being in the right place at the right time, reading that quarterback, helping out on that route, obviously coming down with the ball. 
that's what that old veteran does. He comes down, he comes down with the ball. That's the pit bull. And so the Sharks will start at their five yard line. Not as good field position as they would have had with an incomplete pass, but as you know in this game, you can make up that ground pretty quickly. And Damian Fleming will have a little bit of room to operate. So we'll see the Jacksonville offense on the field for the first time just two and a half minutes into this game after the interception by Mishai Robinson. Mo Williams, Daryl Thompson, and Theron Lewis, the three starting receivers for Jacksonville. Thompson in motion, swinging around to the left side here on first and 10. Fleming under pressure right away, and he gets thrown down. Not a whole lot of lost ground right there for Jacksonville. As Fleming kind of saw something right away, Sally. He was under pressure immediately and started moving around the pocket, but just couldn't find a, any running room to escape. Right. He wanted to get rid of the ball there. It was great defense with these, those DBs there on their behalf, making sure there's no, uh, no passing lanes. This time Fleming looking for Lewis, and that pass a little bit behind his receiver. That'll bring up a third down and 11 for Jacksonville as the Sharks need something to get this drive started. Keep an eye on 47 and 13 coming around the edge for Monterey. 47, Jabari Fletcher leads the NAL with nine and a half sacks this season. And 13 is Joe Sykes, the former Shark, one of the all-time sack leaders in the history of arena football. Third down, Fleming looking for his man and has him. That's Daryl Thompson right at the sticks. How about that route? As Thompson knew exactly what he needed to get. Picks up 11 and the first down. That's right, Xander. Talking about a great route. You know, in and out of that break. Uh, great ball on Fleming's behalf right at the sticks, being able to get that first down. Spotted out of the 15-yard line, new set of downs for Jacksonville. They'll pitch it to Ross, who takes it up the middle and cuts his way forward for about four yards. A solid run for the boss on his first carry of the game. That's a dimension that we'll see from the Sharks' offense all game long is big Derek Ross, who leads the NAL with 12 rushing touchdowns. Talking about a big guy, low center of gravity. You know, he's got a great match matchup in West Maui there at the MAC linebacker there. It's going to be a great battle all game. I'll tell you what, he's also great at cutting that grass. We'll see if we get the lawnmower after this drive, if Ross finds his way into the end zone. Second down and six from the 19-yard line. Fleming back to pass, now stepping up in the pocket, pulls it down, has him running around the midfield to the 20, the 15, lowers his shoulder to get inside the 10-yard line. Damian Fleming, tremendous heads-up awareness to pull the ball down and get about 20 yards on the play. And talking, to, and talking about it earlier, bringing something to the offense, you know, great to be more of a pocket passer. Obviously, we can tell how versatile he is just by using those feet, you know, 500 yards so far. You can see what he's doing here. And Fleming, with some great footwork in the pocket, then found himself in a wide open space. And how about that little move at the end to lower his shoulders safely and dive forward for another four yards? Another handoff to Ross, running left this time. Gets a couple on the play. Joe Sykes is there with the stop, along with Jerry Turner playing the nose guard. So this steel roster has got former Sharks all over it. Jerry Turner, a guy that's been around arena football forever. Tremendous success with the Sharks back a few years ago, along with Sykes. A lot of pass rushes on this Monterey team, Saleh. So if Fleming can show that running threat early and often, maybe that slows them up a little bit. I, I think you're right. You're right. You're hitting the, uh, the hammer on the head there. You know, you want to keep that defensive honest uh, just by being uh, in the pocket. I mean, if he's going to run, he's going to run. If he's going to pass, he's going to pass. Jacksonville's going to take a second to think about this one, Bill. 
Call timeout and we'll step aside. 8.05 to go here in the first quarter. No score between the Sharks and Steel, but Jacksonville knocking on the door. Second to goal when we come back right here on CW17. Back in Jacksonville with a great interception there by Mishai Robinson to get this drive going. And Jacksonville now knocking on the door with a second and goal from the six yard line. As Damian Fleming finds Theron Lewis for a quick pass to get a little bit closer, about three yards. And that maybe opens up the playbook a little bit more. Saleh more in the range of Derek Ross, who can pound it in from this short yardage. Absolutely, as we can tell with Derek Ross there, every time he gets a ball, it's at least three to four yards. So, I mean, that's definitely in the offensive favor. Three of those is a first down, you know, almost a first down. So be ready to see him get in the end zone here. First drive of the game for the Jacksonville offense, and they've got a third and goal from just inside the three-yard line. Fleming keeps it himself running right. Gets stacked up and dropped as Wes Moia comes in and takes him down. Great job by the Mac linebacker there to size up that play, kind of work his way through the wash and take down Fleming short of the goal line. Talking about another veteran of the game there, Wes Mawia uh, being at that Mac linebacker, definitely uh, familiar with that position, obviously making a big play. Jacksonville wastes no time to bring on Nick Belcher. They'll go for a short field goal here from right about extra point range lined up on the right hash. Mo Williams puts the ball down. Belcher's kick is up, and he knocks it right through. So Jacksonville doesn't find the end zone, but does get on the board. Three points for Jacksonville after the stop, and Sully, that's... Better than nothing as Jacksonville gets three points to get on the board here on their first drive of the game. We'll see if the defense get another stop. We'll be right back in just a couple of moments. You're watching Jacksonville Sharks football right here on CW17.
Beautiful day in Jacksonville and a great night for arena football here inside the Shark Tank as the Jacksonville Sharks trying to stay on top of the NAL standings coming in at a perfect 7-0. Xander Key and Saleh Key here with you, Reagan Bailey on the sidelines as Jacksonville leads 3-0 a little more than halfway through the first quarter. And Saleh, we talked about the defenses so far, two possessions, no touchdowns for either team. Right. Uh, you can see with the Jacksonville Sharks, their D-line is definitely setting the tone. Uh, hopefully, coming out here on this uh, series, we they'll be able to get the ball back for uh, for the offense here. Belcher went for the deuce last time, missed a little bit wide to the right, but maybe the field goal will give Belcher a little more confidence as if he tries this one. Jacoby Jones leaning back against the end wall. As Belcher steps in, drives another one deep. This one, though, won't make it to the wall. Fielded by Jones in the back of the end zone, heading right up the middle, and he'll get taken down just outside of the 10-yard line. So better defensive field position for Jacksonville, though starting at the 20 didn't help Monterey last time as the Sharks did not allow a first down. And we'll see how they handle Darwin Pittman and the Monterey offense. And this time around, we saw Zale. Pittman and the steal favor the shotgun offense, which you don't see a whole lot in arena football. So that's a bit of an adjustment for this Jacksonville date. You're right, Xander. All it is here with the defensive line, just giving them a little extra uh, second. But obviously them getting off the ball here, they can minimize that. Hopefully getting back there to the quarterback. Out of the gun, Pittman, his pass caught about seven yard gain on first down. Well, you know, with the shotgun here, you don't really see it a lot. Uh, being under the center, you know, three steps, quick routes, shotgun, and only takes a little bit more time. By the time you're able to read after catching that ball in that shotgun back there, you know, the, the D-line is going to be in your face. So that's why they kind of, I feel, they eliminate the shotgun in this game. Or you don't see it as much. About the only time I've seen the shotgun was a game, game against New Orleans a few years ago for Jacksonville is this handoff will not get first down yardage. They give it to Nathaniel Dunn. Manning the fullback spot, Charlie Hunt, the Jack linebacker, steps up, takes him down. Nathaniel Dunn, not a typical fullback body type here in arena football, 6'6", 250. Great body for a Jack linebacker, but doesn't quite have the heft of most fullbacks and you know not quite the power of Derrick Ross with the football there, but we'll see if Monterey continues to mix in the run game. Third down and short as Pittman lines up in the shotgun this time. Back to pass, looking left, fires deep, and that one is too strong. Once again, Eric McIntosh right there in coverage brings up yet another fourth down, Saleh, another opportunity for Jacksonville's defense. Great defense on the DBs there. As you can see, Highland playing in position to where he's playing up front and he's helping on the deeper route behind there with McIntosh. Great, great part on the defensive side there. DBs creating that to be a fourth down. And Monterey is going to bring out the field goal unit. They are near midfield as Brandon Rutherford comes on. This isn't exactly the type of range where you'd just be trying to clear them all out, so they're gonna go for this. And Eric McIntosh is back, ready to possibly return if this one comes up short. Crawford with the hold, Rutherford's kick is up. That one misses way wide to the left. Jacksonville gets off the field without allowing a point yet again. And this time, Sully, they'll be set up in pretty good field position after the missed field goal. So we'll keep it right here, 3.46 to go in quarter number one. Haven't seen a lot of the Sharks offense. Damian Fleming, though, doing a lot with his legs. We saw Jerry Turner pick up a sack on the very first play of the game for Jacksonville. But after that, Fleming in command. A nice pass to Daryl Thompson, then that run to get all the way down the field. We'll see if he finds a little more rhythm in the passing game on this drive, Sally. It seemed, you know, maybe a, a touch off, a little bit of rust. The one benefit, though, for Jacksonville, They've had the same three receivers all season long in Mo Williams, Theron Lewis, and Daryl Thompson. And when you switch quarterbacks, kind of having that security blanket of three receivers has got to help. Absolutely. I mean, 
you see that in practice, you know, having these three uh, group of guys here, you know, just building that chemistry, that's a big thing. On first down, they go to Thompson, but the pass in and out of his hands, throwing a little bit high. Thompson would have liked to maybe have that one back. It'll be second down and 10 after the incompletion. Sergio Schiaffina in there in coverage for Monterey. <laughs> Lewis and Williams out to the left. Now Thompson comes around in high motion to join them. Fleming from his own end zone has a wide open man. That's Daryl Thompson at the 20. Thompson tries to cut his way around the defender. Can't quite break free. Maybe a touchdown saving tackle there for Justin Broom because if Thompson was able to shake him, he had a whole lot of green turf in front of him. And that's the guy you want to tackle because I tell you what, when he gets loose, we already know what he can do, right, Xander? Absolutely. Daryl Thompson, dangerous in running his routes. He's quick, but maybe the most dangerous with the football in his hands. Has picked up a couple of key first downs already in this game. That one, a gain of 16, gets Jacksonville all the way out to the 21-yard line. Now a quick pass. This one is Lewis. He tries to work his way back across the field and won't quite get there. He's only gained about three yards on the play. Jabari Fletcher, a heads-up play by the defensive lineman to come back, not give up on the play, and take down the receiver, Theron Lewis. Tell you what, these, these screens in this game got to be quick here because next thing you know, the D-line's going to be in your face. And as you can see, Fletcher being all in the mix there along with Wes Maui. We've seen Monterey mix up its defensive alignment already. Jerry Turner started the game at nose guard, number 18, but he's since moved outside. Jabari Fletcher has flipped from left end into the nose, and Joe Sykes is going to man that right end spot pretty much all game long. Second down and seven for Damian Fleming, looking deep, and that one is caught for a Jacksonville hold on as they're gonna spot it just outside of the goal line. Mo Williams, a tremendous diving catch. He thought he had a touchdown. The crowd thought he had a touchdown, but they're gonna say that it's just down to the one yard line, setting up the Sharks with first and goal. What a great play on Fleming's part, putting that ball right there in his hands. You know, DB was running with him there, still being able to, to create some space. He zoomed it in there and made a great catch. Look at that. Threading the needle, Svante Davenport had pretty good coverage. He was right there, and a throw that was a split second later probably would have been knocked down at the very least. Could be the final play of the first quarter. Fleming takes it himself, dives forward, and they're going to say he's short. Spotted, call it the six-inch line, as Fleming can't quite get in on first and goal. The Sharks will have a couple more chances as time ticks down. We've talked about the defense ad nauseum coming into this game in the open throughout the first quarter, and that's what we've seen so far. Just three points on the board, all three for the home team. Jacksonville leads three to nothing over the Monterey Steels. We come to the end of the first quarter. Talking about a great tackle there. I don't know uh, if you were able to see that again there, Xander. West, West Mauia jumping over the pile. Obviously, they're being on the one or maybe the inch, inch line, <laughs> the inch line there. I mean, gosh, it doesn't take you too far to get in, but what a great play. So we'll step aside, coming right back for a second and goal in the start of the second quarter in just a moment, right here on CW17.
Get your Sharks tickets today in the next home game coming up just one week from tonight on, or two weeks from tonight, I should say, on June 3rd. It'll be Pirates and Princesses Night, another one of those great theme nights. 904-621-0700. That's 904-621-0700 to join the Jacksonville Sharks for their next home game against the Grizzlies. As we get started for the, set for the start of the second quarter, three nothing the scores. Andrew Keen, Sully Key with you here on CW17. It's a defensive showdown so far. And Jacksonville just outside the end zone. Touchdown here would be big because as great as the defense has been playing, if Jacksonville can't get in and has to maybe try another field goal or get stopped on downs, all of a sudden Monterey has got to be thinking, okay, we had two empty drives, but we're still in this thing. That's if right. If you can get seven points on the board, then you're in much better shape. Still keeping them motivated, knowing that, you know, being here in the Shark Tank is going to be tough, especially their last outing there in Monterey. Uh, you know, they're, they're coming out with vengeance. These two teams met back on April 24th. Jacksonville got up to a big lead early and cruised from there. 60 to 21 was the final. Down in Monterey, it was a, a bit of an odyssey for Jacksonville. The team flew into San Antonio, spent the night there, then uh, took a nice long drive down across the border to Monterey and then took care of business, came all the way back. And that was on a Monday night, turned right around and beat the Columbus Lions here in our last TV broadcast. So. Definitely having Monterey in the league has added a dynamic when it comes to travel, but the Sharks handled that one trip well, and they'll actually get the benefit of hosting Monterey uh, to close out the regular season on June 17th, and that'll actually be our next TV broadcast right here on CW17. The ball's about as close as it can be to the goal line without being in. Damian Fleming took it right up the middle on first and goal. Got about three quarters of a yard and they spotted him just short. Be ready to see Big Boss Ross on this play. Fleming with the snap, he'll run to the right. There's a flag down as Fleming is down. Again, short of the goal line, might have even lost half a step. So Monterey defenders are pointing in the direction of a penalty against Jacksonville, but we have laundry on the field for the first time tonight. Did not have a penalty called in the first quarter. A referee tonight, Scott Aronowitz, and he'll make his first penalty call. Defense number 11 in the second neutral zone. Half the distance to the goal. Replay second down. Going to be offside against Nathaniel Dunn, the Jack linebacker, lined up too close to the line of scrimmage as Jacksonville gets another free play there. As Fleming's been stopped on a couple of these short yardage runs, we've talked about the talented big defensive line for Monterey. That's a big advantage here. Early stages of the second quarter here in Jacksonville. Second down and goal once again. Ball on the left hash inside the one yard line. Fleming, hand off to Ross, and this time it's a Jacksonville touchdown. Derek Ross thought about making his way to midfield, and now here he comes after giving the ball to a lucky Shark fan. Looks like we will, in fact, see the lawnmower started up for the first time tonight as Ross mows him down and puts the Sharks on top 9-0. Definitely something we see night in and night out with Big Ross, the big boss right there. Derek Ross, not the NAL's leading rusher in terms of yardage, but is in terms of touchdowns. That's touchdown number 13 on the year for Derek Ross. Belcher on for his first PAT attempt of the night. And his kick is true. He delivers the Sharks' 10th point of the night. And while it is technically still a one-score game, Jacksonville happy to be up 10-0 here with 13.37 to go in the second quarter. And this is about the perfect start for Jacksonville. We'll talk about more of that in just a second, but we'll step aside and come right back in a moment. Sharks up by 10 right here on CW17.
just how they drew it up for Jacksonville. Derek Ross takes it off down to the left, gets it in, and then goes to start the lawnmower at midfield. Jacksonville on top, 10-0 here in the second quarter. Xander Keen, Saleh Key, Reagan Bailey here with you. 13.37 to go in quarter number two inside the Shark Tank as Nick Belcher drives this one toward the goalpost. It's up, and it's good. Belcher drops the deuce, and just like that, a 10-point lead is now a 12-point lead as Jacksonville gets two extra points as that deuce is brought to you by Amazons, the leader in sanitation, Saleh. We talked about it. Coming into the game, Belcher a threat to go for the deuce just about at any point. And right there, he delivers to give Jacksonville a true two-score lead. Definitely confirming why he was, you know, the special teams player the, of, of the game last week. Obviously, he's a guy that can make that play. Having, uh, you know, that trust for the team, that's definitely points to count on. That is deuce number eight this season for Nick Belcher. So not just a guy who can kick field goals, not just a guy that can kick extra points, but those extra two points in the form of the deuce can come up large. We haven't really seen a close game for Jacksonville at the end yet, but just waiting for one, you gotta feel like at some point this year, it's gonna be down to the wire. Belcher's ability to get two points in addition to a touchdown or a field goal, whatever, got you that kickoff opportunity. It's just going to benefit Jacksonville that much more. And not only that, but they've kept the ball out of the hands of Jacoby Jones, the guy who's averaging about 20 yards per kickoff return this year. Jones has only had his hands on it once and got about 11 yards on the run back. But for Jacksonville, a perfect start to start on defense, get back-to-back -back stops, and put up 12 points is pretty much perfect coming off a of bye week against the number three team in the NAL. Darwin Pittman under center here for Monterey to open this drive. Back to pass, looking deep. And it one is up. And a fight for the football. No call made yet by the officials. And David Island comes away with the ball. Wow. And they're going to rule it a reception. Tell you what, that's a tough call. But we all know when Highland is around the ball, he definitely makes big plays like that. Jacksonville defenders are screaming for Coach Stout to throw the challenge flag. The ruling on the field was joint possession by opponent. By rule, the ball belongs to the offense. And there comes the red flag fired out from the Jacksonville bench. So the ruling on the field was a catch. Joint possession goes to the offense. That was what was ruled. The fans here in Jacksonville certainly think that that was an interception by David Island. It does look like Highland had more of the football as we got a look on the video board. But we'll see what the official can come up with as this could be a big play in giving Jacksonville that much more of an edge. Talking about textbook, that is the right way to catch the ball at its high speed. Come in Highland there.
After review, both players were airborne and controlled the ball. However, the defense was the first to return to the ground. By rule, that's an interception. Therefore, the revolt moved. The ruling on the field is overturned. So the challenge pays off for Jacksonville as David Highland hauls the interception. Saleh, during the review, we were kind of talking about it looked like Highland got two hands on the football and brought it in before the Monterey receiver kind of worked his way back with a second hand. And so the officials, I think, made the right call based on what it looked like live and then after the replays as well. Talking about fighting for the ball, you can tell with Highland being in the air, grabbing it with two hands and trying to pull it as close as he can to his chest. Came big, you know, as far as the outcome here on, on, uh, on getting the ball there for the offense. Take one more look at it again. Pittman off his back foot, fires it deep. Great job of closing there by David Highland who pulls the ball in with both hands and ends up joint possession. And it goes the way of the Jacksonville Sharks. Now on first down, Fleming going deep, and that one's up and intercepted. So just like that, Svante Davenport hauls one in. And after all that, Monterey is going to get the football at its own six-yard line. The Sharks got aggressive there on first down, going deep. Looking for Williams, but the pass not quite on target and hauled in by Davenport. We talked about it earlier, Xander. It's going to be a big, a big defensive uh, day. You know, seeing both both teams display their their strengths on their defensive side. Obviously, we're seeing a lot of that today so far. Davenport, a rookie out of North Alabama, just got good positioning there. Is Mo Williams kind of had to fight his way back and couldn't get around the DB to try and break that one up. High snap handled by Pittman. He pulls it down. He'll try to run. Great job closing by Charlie Hunt. Takes down the quarterback right at the line of scrimmage. And that's a heads-up play from a Jack linebacker. Absolutely. Prototype Jack linebacker you see there. Being able to read the quarterback, follow him, make sure he doesn't leave the pocket. And if he does want to take off, being expecting a big hit from uh, number 11 there, Charlie Hunt. Second down and about 10. Monterey still back at its own six or seven yard line. Gilliard in high motion. And the pass complete to former Shark Marty Gilliard. A gain of about eight yards. And now a third and short coming up for Monterey. Gilliard, a guy who played here in Jacksonville back in 2014. Played four games and showed no sign of adjustment. He was dominating the uh, Arena Football League at the time and then ended up signing with the Montreal Alouettes of the CFL spent a few years up there and then ends up back here now in the NAL. So between Gilliard and Jacoby Jones, two receivers with a lot of outdoor football experience, not quite as much indoor compared to London Crawford, the guys who been playing arena football for a long time. Pittman has Dello Davis over the middle, a big hit by Highland, but not before Monterey gets across midfield. Spot of the 24-yard line here with 10 and change to go in quarter number two. Back to the shotgun for Pittman, under pressure, pulls it down with some running room. Tries to get around McIntosh and can't quite get to the corner as Eric McIntosh stands his ground and pulls down Pittman after a four-yard gain. Right at the 20-yard line, second down and six coming up. And I'll tell you what, Eric McIntosh giving up a lot of size there, but the DB shows toughness to take down the big quarterback, Darwin Pittman. Definitely. This is a vet that knows the game, knows how to play the angles, knows how to play the wall, use it as an extra man as well. I'm pretty sure he has a great strategy in play to use to his advantage there. Darwin Pittman, 6'4", 240. Eric McIntosh, 5'11", about 180. But the Jacksonville DB makes the tackle. 
Pittman to the right, and that one is almost intercepted by McIntosh. He has been around the football all game long. He'll want that one back. That's twice today he could have came back with the pick here. Uh, obviously, the, the team that the D-line, that's pretty much all I got to say. Setting that up for him, putting, putting the pressure on the quarterback, making him force balls like that. Gosh, DB should be uh, getting interceptions all day. Yeah, that one looked like Gilliard cut toward the wall to the right, and Pittman kind of threw it up the middle, and McIntosh is right there. Couldn't quite make the play, but it is a third down and six here for the Monterey offense. Still kind of running out of time. They'll call their first timeout of the game. So each team has used one timeout here in the first half. Of course, stoppage is not quite as critical in the first half as they are in the second. 12 0, Jacksonville on top defense looking for a third stop. We'll have that for you when we come back right here on CW 17. Be sure to follow the Sharks on all your favorite social media channels, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, and YouTube to stay up to date on all things Jacksonville Sharks 24-7, 365. Back inside, Veterans Memorial Arena, great crowd on hand for Star Wars night as the Sharks have certainly used the force so far. David Highland wrenching away an interception, maybe the biggest showcase of that. And now the Jacksonville defense trying to get another stop. Third down and six for Monterey from the Jacksonville 20-yard line. London Crawford in motion, shotgun snap to Pittman. He's under pressure, he forces his way out of it, but he won't get back to the line of scrimmage. Charlie Hunt closes the deal there, along with Skylar Skursik. Great defensive pressure there on Skursik. Another fourth down opportunity for Jacksonville. The last time a steal on a fourth down, they elected a field goal, but Brandon Rutherford's kick was nowhere near the goal post, so they're going to keep the offense on the field, try and force the issue here. Fourth down, and we'll call it seven. Crawford to the left. Davis the near side right. Marty Gilliard in high motion, cutting back to the right slot. And a flag is down. I think Monterey didn't get it off in time. Looking at the play clock right now with a zero. Number nine. That's going to back the steal to a fourth down and 12. Fourth down. That's where the atmosphere here, Saleh, can play in when Jacksonville's crowd gets loud and gets the other team off rhythm. Tell you what, it's another experience playing here in the Shark Tank. When these fans get ready and rowdy, I'll tell you what, it's hard to concentrate. Monterey huddles up with the ball back at its own 24-yard line. 
Under seven to play here in quarter number two. Jacksonville on top, 12 nothing. Fourth down and 12 for Monterey. And now flags are down yet again. Ball start, offense, high motion man. 10 yard penalty, fourth down. They're gonna get Crawford the high motion man for being over the line and again that timing, it's gotta be on point between the quarterback and the wide receiver, knowing where that receiver is and when you can snap the football because now it's fourth and 22 and guess what? They're not gonna keep the offense on the field as here comes Rutherford in the field goal unit. This is one of those opportunities where Monterey is going to try and kick a field goal here, but there's not a whole lot of a chance to make it. In a case like this, oftentimes you're just trying to clear the ball out and get yourself better field position. Right, you know, given the, you know, the return, they're an opportunity to return as well. You know, getting them set back in their half of the field, that's, that's their goal, unless this kicker can actually make it through the uprights. Well, looks like it would be about a 51-yard field goal. That's the same distance of Marco Capazzoli's game winner back in 2012 in the playoffs. We'll see what Rutherford can do here. Crawford to hold, and Rutherford's kick is away. And, yeah, this one is going to be well short. McIntosh with some room to run. Heads his way up the middle to the 15, cuts back to the 20, and gets just outside the 20-yard line, finally stacked up by Jabari Fletcher and company. But a great return there by McIntosh. And Jacksonville in business coming up. 12-0, the Sharks defense continues to pitch a shutout here at home against Monterey. Offense back on the field when we come back. You are watching Jacksonville Sharks football right here on CW17. It's Star Wars night. Looks like we've got a couple of Darth Mauls there as the Jacksonville Sharks lead 12-0. Get your Sharks tickets today, the next home game on June 3rd. It'll be Pirates and Princesses night, so the fans will be out in full force, dressed up in their attire for that one as well. 904-621-0700 again. 904-621-0700 is the number to call. Come join us here in the Shark Tank as Jacksonville tries to keep it rolling, both on the field and around in the arena. Jacksonville's offense starting at the 20-yard line, and let's send it down to Reagan at field level. I'm here with David Highland, who got the second pick of the game. Arena football is supposed to be high scoring. You know, what do you see out there? You know, we just had a lot of preparation. Uh, we kind of knew what they were going to do ahead of time. Coach put us in a good position to make plays, and we're just doing just that. How do you keep that going throughout the rest of the half and the rest of the game? We come down and pay attention to detail at this point. Um, we kind of not necessarily know the whole game plan, but we kind of have a good idea, and I just continue to execute. Great. Solly and David, back up to you. All right, thanks a lot, Reagan. No game for Derek Ross there on second down. 
Jacksonville's offense maybe trying to use a little clock right here, knowing they'll get the ball to start the third quarter. About 5.20 and counting here in quarter number two. Fleming back to pass, looks left, has Williams, a short gain of about five yards, but nice play to kind of cut the distance in half, get out to midfield and put yourself in a more manageable position. You don't want to be in a third and long situation because, as you well know, Saleh, in arena football, it's usually four down territory. So if you can get some of that yardage on, on first and second down, you know you've got a couple of cracks at it, only needing five. And you're right, and just watching uh, T. Lou in motion there, I can tell that he was the first, you know, first option. Great job on Fleming reading the check down uh, and still getting yards. Fleming trying to bounce back after throwing the interception on the first play of the last drive. He's got Lewis in motion yet again. This time finds him, and T. Lou kind of backed up but ends up getting first down yard. He's caught it at maybe the 19 and tried to spin his way to the outside but does manage to find the sticks, move the chains to pick up that first down. Jacksonville now down to the 20-yard line. Moving a bit methodically here on this drive. 4-10 to go, first and 10. Coach Stout and Damian Fleming there getting the play in. This is now the third start of the season for Fleming. It was against Monterey where Tommy Grady got hurt, ended up having surgery a couple of weeks later, and he is out for at least the remainder of the regular season. So the Damian Fleming show rolls on. The Sharks trying to get to 3-0 with him under center. Deep pass for Fleming, looking for Lewis, and it's incomplete. Two players got their hands on it. First, it was Svante Davenport already with a pick tonight as he tipped it with one hand, and then Lewis tipped it with another hand. Neither player could pull it in, and it's second down and 10. Great route on uh, T. Lou's part there, giving him a one-two step at the top of his route, being able to get past him. Great play on number four. Fleming maybe had to lay the ball off a little bit more to get it over the defensive back's head and into the arms of T. Lou, but Jacksonville's got a couple more shots at it here. It's only second down. It'll be Daryl Thompson in high motion this time for Jacksonville. Quick pass to Thompson, plays the ball off the wall, and that's a heads-up play by the young Daryl Thompson, knowing that that ball is live off the wall. Used it to his advantage, and that is a reception, I believe. Players are trying to get unraveled there down around the 15-yard line. The Steelers are going to throw the challenge flag, so we'll see if we get another look at it. It did look like Thompson was able to pull it in there off the wall, but the steal will Monterey challenge. Is challenging the ruling on the field of a completed pass. It's going to be a close call here. I mean, when you're catching it against the wall, anytime you get tagged or touched against the wall, it's considered out of bounds. Correct, Xander? Yeah, so you can't advance it, but you can, you know, play the ball off the wall to yourself. But if nobody has possession, then potentially Monterey could have came away with the interceptions. We'll see what Scott Aronowitz and the officiating crew take a look at. So it looks like it's going to stay Jacksonville football, Sully. And that was a, a tough one to tell right off the bat. It doesn't look like there was a good angle for Aronowitz, at least, to overturn the call. The ruling on the field stands. There was no available replay. And Monterey will not be charged with a timeout. 
So after all that, it's a reception for Daryl Thompson of about seven yards. Jacksonville now inside the 15-yard line, 2.17 to go. Already up 12-0, a chance to extend that lead to perhaps 19 or even 20. And then maybe, you never know, another two points after that. Be on the lookout for Big Boss Ross here. You know, a quick screen, uh, you know, maybe a quick run, first down. Definitely a guy you can count on for the first down. Ross does have four receptions this season, so usually gets the ball in a handoff, but the screen game always an option as well. Fleming will pass as he's under pressure, rolling to the right, pulls the ball down, now charges forward and gets back to the line of scrimmage. So Damian Fleming avoids disaster as he was under pressure, but it'll be a fourth down here for the Jacksonville offense. Looks like Monterey's D-line is coming together there, putting some great pressure on Fleming, obviously hit with him leading the po uh, leaving the pocket, not being able to, you know, see downfield to his receivers. You know, he had to create something and show how versatile it really is when he leaves that pocket, right? Yeah, no weak links on that Monterey defensive line. you got Fletcher, Turner, Sykes, Wes Mawia, the back linebacker, all arena football veterans, all accomplished players in the arena game. A hard count from Fleming. And Coach Stout's going to call timeout here with 105 to second go in the second the quarter. Jacksonville. Jacksonville unafraid to use timeouts, knowing that maybe they won't get the ball back later on. So we'll step aside. We'll come right back. Jacksonville on top, 12-0 here with 105 to go in the second quarter on CW17. Number 72 is an eligible receiver. 72 is eligible. Back in Jacksonville, Chum in the building. 12-0. Sharks on top of the steal. 105 to go in the second quarter. 28-yard field goal attempt for Nick Belcher. Williams with the hold. Belcher's kick is up. And his kick misses just a bit wide to the left. So Belcher cannot connect. The one-minute timing rules are now in effect. On his second Monterey field goal of timeouts. the game. And that's the one-minute one timeout. timeout. So we'll step aside yet again. Back to close out the first half in just a moment. You are watching Jacksonville Sharks football right here on CW17.
Fun for the whole family here on Star Wars Night. Lightsabers given out to uh, pretty much everybody on their way into the arena. Follow the Sharks on all your favorite social media channels, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, and YouTube as well. To stay up to date on all things Jacksonville Sharks. A low scoring affair so far tonight. 12 nothing is the score. One minute left here in the second quarter. Quick motion for Jacoby Jones as Pittman's pass is caught by Davis. Gets hammered by Eric McIntosh. As Charlie Hunt, the Jack linebacker, kind of held the receiver up and McIntosh finished off the play. Monterey will go quickly here, under one minute to go. Pittman to the right, incomplete, looking for Crawford. That will stop the clock. And in a situation like this, Sully, the clock is almost more important than where you're at on the field because you can get down the field so quickly, but if you run on the time, there's not a whole lot you can do. That's right, and in the arena game, you want to have the ball last, right? So even though, you, you know, the other team may score first, you know, the key is to have the ball last. And Monterey knows they're going to be kicking off to open the third quarter. Imperative for the steal to get on the board here. And, of course, the Sharks want to stop that from happening. Third down and four. Pittman steps up, fires deep, and that one's going to be well short. McIntosh was the closest guy. London Crawford was downfield, but Pittman's pass not quite on target. That brings up fourth down, and this is big. Because if Jacksonville can get a stop, all of a sudden the offense is in scoring position right away. That's right, being that close to the red zone there on the Sharks we have, be ready to see some big plays by Ross or the, and, the, and the receivers. Monterey is going to kick. So maybe taking the better part of value here and saying, all right, if we give the ball back, at least make the Sharks work their way down the field. Because as we've been seeing, Xander, it's been a big defensive game, right? They're going to rely on their defense to stop the Sharks uh, by by doing this strategy here, kicking it to McIntosh. This will be a technically a 55-yard field goal attempt. Rutherford was well short on his last long one. We'll see if he tries to angle this one out of bounds or if he's content to just kick it deep. That one's blocked. It's a free ball. It bounces over the wall. That is two points for Jacksonville. And the Sharks are going to get the ball back with 20 seconds to work with. When you're trying to kick it deep, you got that lower launch angle. And that played out as Rutherford could not get the kick past the line of scrimmage. Wasn't, wasn't quite sure off the Blowing jump who got a hand on safety. it. Looks like maybe Jeremiah Price as we get a look at it here. Crawford with the hold. Rutherford and boom, right off the forearm of Jeremiah Price. His second blocked kick of the year. He's the Sharks sack leader as well. So if you're a D lineman, maybe you're not getting to the quarterback yet tonight. You can still make a play on special teams. And the Sharks are scoring in all kinds of ways here tonight. They've only got one touchdown. They're up 14-0, a field goal, a deuce, and now a blocked field goal that will lead to a safety. Tell you what, you got to love the game, Xander. So many ways you can score in this game. Obviously seeing that there on that block kick. Now Monterey is going to have to kick off again. Rutherford can't get a kick blocked this time. We'll see if he goes for the deuce or not. David Island will make his way back. This is the first time we've seen the Jacksonville kickoff return unit all night. Because Monterey has not had the opportunity to kick off having not scored a point so far in the contest. Assuming Saleh that Jacksonville gets the ball back here and has some time to work with, what do you think the strategy is, you know, maybe having only about 15 seconds and one timeout? I would say get within the 10 as soon as possible and then be able to work that clock to your advantages if you want to give it to Big Boss Ross, if you want to take a chance on a touchdown, and then rely on your defense. Obviously, the Sharks' defense is definitely coming up with, you know, on their behalf, you know, in their favor this, this quarter, this half. Rutherford going for the deuce, and he drops it. So Monterey gets on the board, and hey, that one brought to you by Amazons as well, the leader in sanitation as Brandon Rutherford drops the deuce and gets those two points right back. However, 
there is a flag on the field of the five yard line. Monterey thinks they've got two points. Jabari Fletcher is walking the penalty flag back to the officials. Nice favor there by the defensive lineman out of App State. It's in the area of an offside. The kickoff we'll went through the uprights. Two points for Monterey. Two points for Monterey. So I guess maybe it was the penalty flag after all. Actually, Xander, I think it was his towel there. You know, towel, the towel of one of the DBs being yellow kind of got confused as far as I thought the same thing there. Yeah, you see something flopping on the field and it's yellow. You assume it's a penalty <laughs> flag. But, yeah, Monterey with the black and, and yellow pants and the yellow towels. So That's right, absolutely. Correcting that one, it is two points, 14 to 2, 14 seconds left. Fleming me back to pass, looking deep for Thompson, and that one is incomplete. As Thompson gets hammered into the boards by Sergio Schiaffina and couldn't quite pull it in. Talking about putting some zip on that ball, Fleming, I mean, that's a 20-yard out route, you know, sitting on the wall, uh, especially when he's on the other side of the field there. Great read, just got to pull that ball in. And I like the strategy, too, because if that was a catch up against the wall, that does stop the clock and the Sharks would keep the timeout in their back pocket. Now, the clock also stops with the incompletion there. So still the timeout, but just nine seconds to work with as Jacksonville has the ball on the five-yard line. Fleming under pressure, loses it to the left and finds Mo Williams, puts the ball over the wall. So Jacksonville now with the ball at about the 20-yard line. And they're going to bring out Belchers. They're going to go for a deep one here. Three seconds left. It's a bit tough to, you know, run your regular offense and get 30 yards. Certainly Fleming with the, the arm strength to get it there, but maybe playing the higher percentage and try and get some points back with a field goal. Number 72 is going to leave the field, there. right? Leave the field scoring. Disregard. It's going to be a long one. It'll be a 45-yard attempt with half. Belcher, with where Belcher is, is lining up. The Sharks out. are going to think about this one for a second. Looks like Jacksonville just changing one player on the field. Belcher has not made a field goal of 40 plus yards to this point in the season. His long is 38. That was against Lehigh Valley all the way back earlier in the campaign. This a 45 yard attempt for Nick Belcher. And hold on, there's laundry on the field. Belcher's kick would have been a bit wide to the right. Did have the leg. Ball start. Offense, number 98. But this will back Jacksonville up a little bit First more. A.J. Harmon with the false start along the offensive line. Number 72 is an eligible receiver. 72 is eligible. Now making it a 50-yarder for Nick Belcher. And another flag is down. False start. Offense, number 98. Five yard penalty. They're going to get Harmon for yet another false start. So they don't like something with the way that A.J. Harmon is lining up. And all of a sudden, Belcher now back to a 55 yard attempt. The Sharks are switching their field goal block personnel here. I think maybe trying to get some smaller guys out there. Yeah. 
Jacoby Jones standing at about the goal line looking for a return. And this one gets deflected. It's going to be short. Bounces up high into the air for Jones as he corrals at the 10-yard line. Jones tries to work his way around the right corner, cutting toward the middle. Now back to the right, and he'll get corralled and forced into the wall. So Jacksonville does emerge unscathed after the field goal was tipped. This is the end of the first so half. So the Sharks maybe had a chance to score there, Sully, right at the end of the half, but couldn't quite get the execution on the field goal attempt. And we'll take another look here as Belcher stepped into what would have been a 55-yarder. As the kick was away, and I think Joe Sykes might have gotten a bit of a hand on it. He came in pretty free, and Jacksonville may be lucky that that one wasn't blocked outright. Right, everybody knows who Joe Sykes is in this league, and definitely a guy that definitely gets to the quarterback. <laughs> I mean, the guy's been around for so long. All right, let's send it down to Reagan, who's on the field with Coach Stout. I'm here with the Sharks head coach, Mark Stout, and there's a whole lot of defense happening this first half, but not a whole lot of offense. What's going on out there? Yeah, we just got to settle down. We're making too many little mistakes on offense, so we just got to get it settled down and get back to playing Sharks football. And what do we plan to see change in the second half? Say, I didn't hear you. What do we plan to see change in the second half no, on the offense? We just got to start executing. We don't want to change anything. We, just, we do what we do. We just got to execute. All right, perfect. Solly and Xander, back up to you. All right, thanks a lot, Reagan. You hear there from Coach Stout. Sharks don't have to change a lot. They're up by 12. Defense is playing great. 14 to 2 at the half. So we'll step aside, come right back, talk about Star Wars night in just a moment as you are watching Jacksonville Sharks football right here on CW17. It's Star Wars night here in Jacksonville. Fun-filled atmosphere. Don't forget to get your Sharks tickets for our next home game coming up on June 3rd. It'll be Pirates and Princesses night. 904-621-0700 is the number to call to join us in the Shark Tank. Xander Keen, Sully Key with you. 14-2 at halftime. More on that in just a moment because tonight is Star Wars night and the atmosphere has been great from even before the opening kickoff all the way through the first half, you see the attack dance team there. And Saleh, I thought one of the really cool moments was when the lightsabers lit up during player intros. The lights were off, red lights everywhere. Just the atmosphere here in Jacksonville is incredible. And theme nights like Star Wars Night just make this game an event on top of the great arena football action. I mean, who doesn't like Star Wars, right? I mean, you see all the kids, their, their faces are lit up. You know, all the families that are here, you know, with this game being a fan-friendly game. Lightsabers everywhere. I mean, gosh, it just it contributes to the atmosphere for sure. Yeah, I know we've had in the past on Star Wars night, Darth Vader bringing the football to the refs. You've got all kinds of characters out front as well. Just a phenomenal atmosphere. And really, 
all the theme nights are great. You know, so many are designed to, to get fans to interact and dress up, whether it's Redneck Night here tonight, Star Wars Night. You got Pirates and Princesses coming up. And, of course, the, the initiatives as well, Military Appreciation Night, uh, a couple of weeks ago, those jerseys auctioned off for charity, and these ones will be auctioned off for charity as well. Sally, I know you had a chance to to play in those military jerseys back uh, during your tenure with the Jacksonville Sharks, and that's got to be a cool moment to kind of don those jerseys and know that not only is it, is it pretty cool to wear as a uniform, but that it benefits a good cause as well. Absolutely, and it's all about the cause. You know, you represent your country, you appreciate, the, you know, uh, the people that fight for our country. And then having uh, to wear a certain jersey that kind of represents that uh, as far as contributing our love, you know, to them, I mean, it's a big thing. You know, definitely one of my favorite games, you know, playing with the Sharks. You've seen the Star Wars jerseys tonight. Those will be auctioned off for charity as well. Again, fans coming up, dressed up here for Star Wars night all around the arena. And Again, Sally, you come to expect it when you play here in Jacksonville. You know that when you step into that arena, you know that the fans are going to be bringing it. Absolutely, and that's why, you know, just playing here uh, with the various teammates that have filtered through the Sharks, you know, that's why they love Jacksonville. You know, it's the fans, you know, it's the camaraderie. I mean, it's just an exciting place with exciting people. Tonight's broadcast of Jacksonville Sharks football is brought to you by Subaru of Jacksonville. By Moe's Southwest Grill, welcome to Moe's. By Amazon's, the leader in sanitation. By Visit Jacksonville and the Beaches, where Florida begins. By Baptist Health. And by Dick's Wings and Grill, family fun foodery. We're back in Jacksonville here at halftime where the Sharks lead the Monterey Steel 14 to two. Coming into the game, we talked about this being a matchup between the best two defenses in the National Arena League. And in that respect, this game has not disappointed Sully. We've been talking throughout the game, throughout the breaks of just how tremendous of a defensive battle tonight's contest has been so far. Brings uh, out who you are, right? You know, you're gonna flex muscles you haven't flexed before you know, battling a team that, you know, can compete with you as far as on the defensive side. Now it's time for the offense to find out what they really need to do, fine tune what they need to do, and get stuff moving. And the Sharks will have the ball to open the third quarter, a chance for the offense to flex those muscles. Let's take a look at some of the first half highlights 
early on, Misha Robinson staring the interception on Monterey's first drive as that one was over the head of Dello Davis. Jacksonville comes right back. Damian Fleming, a deep pass to Mo Williams. Just short of the goal line. He thought it was a touchdown, but no matter. Derek Ross is there. A couple of plays later, starts up the Lama right midfield. That got Jacksonville on the board and up by two scores. Another deep pass and a tremendous play by David Island. Originally ruled a catch. Highland gets the interception upon review, and then the block field goal by Jeremiah Price. Bounces over the wall for a safety. Monterey did get right back with a deuce on the ensuing safety kick. But for Jacksonville, it's been a great game of defense, and that's bared out. Look at those stats. Neither team's got more than 100 passing yards. You see the two turnovers to the one for Monterey. Jacksonville's dominated the ball. A fairly clean game in terms of penalties, Saleh. So it's been pretty competitive, but I think the, the biggest key right there is first downs. Monterey's only got two. The Sharks have really not allowed them to move the football at all. Right, and that's what they got to keep continuing to do this second half is to keep them out. Because if you look at the score, I mean, it's pretty close. That's that, Those are touchdowns that could keep them in the game. And as far as that goes, you know, big plays on the defense of uh, the backside with Highland, with McIntosh back there, me shot. They need to keep doing what they're doing. D-line putting more pressure on them, creating some havoc so they can make more plays back there. And not reflected there, the rushing yards. Both quarterbacks in this game are mobile. It was Damian Fleming, though, who had a big run to get Jacksonville down the field and set up their first field goal uh, to take the lead 3 nothing. And, yeah, just the defense. The pass rush has been there affecting the quarterback, even though they haven't gotten a sack yet. And the secondary making plays, Mishai Robinson, David Highland. Eric McIntosh is bound to get one of these. He's had his hands on a couple, but... When all three defensive backs are making those kind of plays, we know what Charlie Hunt can do. I mean, that just makes things that much easier. Another look at the NAL standings as we've talked about. Jacksonville unbeaten this season, a perfect 7-0, trying to make it 8-0 tonight. Just one game, though, ahead of the Lehigh Valley Steelhawks who come in at 6-1. Monterey is trying to hold off Columbus and hang on to that number three spot. The Lions and the High Country Grizzlies have kind of been battling back and forth and a bit of a rough go for Georgia, Dayton, and Corpus Christi. And Saleh, as we've mentioned, the Sharks have the target on their back coming into the NAL with the amount of talent that they have, the way they've played so far this season. But as we mentioned earlier, having Lehigh Valley right there at 6-1, and one, I think is a benefit to this Jacksonville team. It is, you know, and it, nobody wants to be 6-1, first of all, you know. As far as the Sharks, you know, you heard Coach leading out into halftime. They just need to continue what the game plan is. And as far as that goes, sky's the limit. You can see what they do when they're on a roll, and I'm excited to see this offense come out and hopefully put up more points. Yeah, it was the defense that dominated the first half, but we know that the Jacksonville Sharks offense is talented as well. Damian Fleming threw one pick but did come back and move the football a little bit after that. So for Jacksonville, a chance to maybe get the offense going. As we mentioned, the Sharks won the toss, and they'll get the ball to start the third quarter, and that is significant here as we open up the second half. 14 to do at halftime, coming right back, getting closer to the start of the second half right here on CW17.
Star Wars night in Jacksonville. The Sharks on top, 14 to two, using the force to hold off the Monterey Steel and stay atop the NAL standings, but only a 12 point margin at halftime. This Jacksonville team has owned the second half all season long. They have not trailed at any point in the second half of this season. They were tied against Lehigh Valley all the way back in, I believe, game number two. But they've handled their business, and they're doing so so far tonight. But you got to think that this Monterey team will have something to say about it before the night's done. There's just too much talent on both sides of the ball for Monterey. You know, they need to get the quarterback Pittman in a little bit more of a rhythm but there's always the potential for the steel offense to explode. Absolutely, you know, Coach John Anderson, you know, I believe he's in the locker room trying to get these guys high, trying to get these guys going, letting them know how close they are, you know, uh, as far as the score being 14 to two. So best believe they're gonna come out of the half with a little bit of fire, a little bit of urgency, and trying to get something going on their end. Mentioned so many former Sharks on this Monterey team. Both defensively and offensively. London Crawford, a guy who spent the last four years here in Jacksonville. You know that he's fired up and wanted to come away with a win here tonight as he returns home, if you will. And on the other side, Joe Sykes, Jerry Turner. Lots of familiar faces. And, you know, that's something that may be missing a little bit here in the NAL when there's so many new players to to for the shark standpoint, you know, you don't have that history that you did back in the AFL, but maybe right. this one of the cases where there's a lot of guys, you know, West Moia as well, a guy who's been around the game for a while, guys on both sides that know each other and kind of can ramp up that intensity just that much more. Absolutely, and just feeding off each other, they can create that chemistry, you know, uh, just being part of the team. I mean, these guys have been around, like you said before, you know, West Maui had just came off of, uh, the championship, the Arena Bowl last year with the Philadelphia Soul, you know, so as far as their experience over there and our experience, it's a pretty good matchup. And uh, we're, obviously, we're obviously seeing it, you know, on the defensive side for both teams. As much as we've talked about the Sharks defense, the Monterey defense is doing a phenomenal job as well. They've only allowed one touchdown to this point in the ball game. Forcing a turnover as Svante Davenport picked off Damian Fleming. Family fun here in Jacksonville again. If you haven't come out to a game, well, thanks for watching us here on CW17, but make sure to come to the Shark Tank in two weeks. No TV broadcast, so make your way to the tank and Watch the Sharks try and keep this thing rolling. 7-0 so far. Game up on Lehigh Valley for first place in the NAL standings. Some other action going on around the NAL. Columbus all the way on top of Dayton, 32 to nothing in that game in the second quarter. So a win would potentially vault Columbus over Monterey if these two scores hold up. And also Lehigh Valley beating the High Country Grizzlies 35 to 13. So the Steelhawks well on their way and Sully, that ramps up the pressure even more with Lehigh Valley winning by 22. You gotta think they're gonna move to seven and one. So the Sharks will definitely wanna keep this one on top and make their way to 8-0. Bounces out of the end zone and over the wall. Highland couldn't quite play the funny hop. But going back, Xander, you're absolutely right. I mean, the Sharks want to stay in the lead here. Obviously, we've got some other good teams here in this league that are competing for that spot. And with the target on the back of the Sharks, you know, they have to continue to mentally stay in the game, stay prepared, and keep continuing with the momentum they already have uh, to come up on top. So that one ruled to bounce over the back wall, not the side wall. Always a little bit dicey with the curved end zones here in Jacksonville. There's that yellow stripe uh, over in the back corner that you see by the Sharks bench. And if it goes sort of between the yellow stripe and the goal post, that's considered the back wall and it comes out to the five. Side wall would be the 20. So Jacksonville on the five yard line here to open the third quarter. Damian Fleming, a quick pass, has his man T. Lou. Gets out across the 10 yard line to the 12, and that's a solid seven or eight yard game for Jacksonville to open this drive. 
Great way to get that ball out in front, put, putting them around the 15, you know. That way Fleming there doesn't have to worry about dropping back into the end zone. Because obviously, like we've been seeing today, both defensive lines have been putting great pressure on the quarterback. Nine touchdowns and now two picks for Damian Fleming this season. Fleming, of course, making his third start of the year, replacing Tommy Grady, who had surgery after getting hurt against Monterey down there in Mexico about a month ago. Fleming under pressure on second down, trying to escape Joe Sykes. It does so. Gets a, about a yard and maybe only back to the line of scrimmage. Jerry Turner, good job chasing down the Jacksonville quarterback, but getting away from Joe Sykes is no easy task. And again, you see the legs of Fleming on display, turning a sack into a third and short. Definitely isn't easy with Joe Sykes. You know, like I said, this guy knows the angles, knows who he's going against, knows how to perfect his own craft and come up as well on top like we just saw with that pressure he did on the last uh, play here. Sykes during his one season in Jacksonville a couple of years ago set the all-time AFL single season sack record. So fans here in Jacksonville know absolutely what Joe Sykes can do. Third down and two, Fleming under pressure, he goes down. And there it is, Joe Sykes from behind. Takes down Fleming and sets up Jacksonville into a fourth and long. And it looks like Jacksonville is going to bring on the field goal unit here, playing things a little bit conservatively. With that 14-2 lead in hand, don't want to give Monterey great field position, figuring if you kick it away, at least you can hold them on their half of the field. First time out of the half, Jacksonville. Time out. Definitely want to make sure you have your Ducks in a row here because they get a block here. Could be a potential, uh, you know, touchdown or whatnot. Got to make sure you have the right guys out there in the right position because, as you can see, Sykes is coming off that ball pretty hard. A field goal attempt coming up when we come back. Sharks up 14 to two early in the third quarter right here on CW17. Back inside the Shark Tank, 14 to two is the score, 12-13 to go in the third quarter. As Nick Belcher drives a deep kick that Nick made it closer to the goalpost than anybody in the arena expected. And Jacoby Jones 
was lined up so far forward that he didn't have a chance to get back and field it. That one works out just about perfectly for Jacksonville. It's a touchback, and Monterey will start at the five-yard line. Great kick on Belcher's behalf. Like you said, I mean, he kicked it all the way back, put it in a hard position for, for Jacoby there to make a catch. Jacoby Jones known as a kickoff return specialist during his time in the NFL, the Houston Texans and Baltimore Ravens, among others, here playing with Monterey. You want to keep the ball out of his hands if at all possible. Quick pass and a quarterback change. Dello Davis gets the first down. And the steal have gone to number eight, Byron Ingram. 6'6", 230-pound rookie out of Morehouse College. So Coach John Anderson makes the change at halftime, and Sully will see if the quarterback change gives Monterey a spark. First down, pass goes to Davis yet again. Good pursuit and a tackle there for Jacksonville. Jeremiah Price, the D lineman, recognizes the screen pass, turns around, and makes the tackle left after only about a gain of three yards. And great read on his behalf. I mean, gosh, see how fast he got there. That is what defensive is supposed to do, you know? Get up field, rush, and react to the ball. When you've got your ears pinned back and knowing that, you know, 90% of the time or more, it's going to be a pass. Right. To be able to have the wherewithal to turn around and make that tackle. Great play, as you mentioned there, by Jeremiah Price. Ingram lobs it deep, looking for Crawford. It's up at that time. Eric McIntosh pulls it in for an interception. The third time he's got his hands on the football, and this time he hauls it in. The throw was behind Crawford. McIntosh with a great job of adjusting on it and pulls in the pick. Jacksonville takes over at about its own one-yard line. Third time is a charm, Xander. Finally got what he's been looking for the first two times. Good job. And you see there the pocket collapsed on Ingram. Jeremiah Price got a hand up, might have altered the throw just enough to keep it away from London Crawford and serve it up for Eric McIntosh, the first-year Shark, but the longtime arena football defensive back. Gets a stop his team needed as Jacksonville gets another crack at it on offense. Fourth interception overall tonight, the third by Jacksonville, one for Robinson, one for Highland, and now one for Eric McIntosh. Fleming under pressure, he goes down, the ball is out and on the ground. It's picked up, and that is going to be a safety. We've talked about the defensive game, and that's the second safety of the game. The first was on a blocked field goal by Jacksonville, and this time, you take a look at it, Fleming stepped up in the pocket, and guess who, Joe Sykes comes around, forces the fumble, and lucky for Jacksonville that Fleming had the presence of mind to get up and get the football and prevent disaster, because it looked like Jeremiah Zine was kind of crawling his way to the ball to maybe fall on it for a touchdown. Nobody really noticed uh, that the ball was laying there on the turf. Right, great job on Joe Sykes. I mean, this guy, you know, like you said, leading in sacks last year, definitely shown what he's made of, especially being back here in the Shark Tank, having a lot of fans that know him here. I'm pretty sure that it's really exciting for him. Got to venture a guess that this is the first 14 to four score in Jacksonville Sharks history. Not sure if we'd have enough time to confirm that, but Four points, not a total you see a lot in football when you've got the deuce and the safety as potential options, and there you go. So Jacksonville's still up by 10. The defensive battle continues as the Sharks have now come up empty on each of their first two drives here in the second half. Delcher rips this one right down the middle, and those two points are right back. Drops another deuce brought to you by Amosons, the leader in sanitation. The kickers are putting on a show tonight, Saleh. That's right. Nick Belcher definitely showing what he's made of. Coming off of last week, player of the game. This guy's got a leg. So now it's 16 to 4. 
How about that? Both times there's been a safety. The other teams come right back and drop the deuce to get those two points back. So the defensive game like this, I guess you're looking for as many points as possible, right, Xander? Yeah, Nick Belcher's delivered a whole lot of them. He's scored eight of Jacksonville's 16 points so far. Quick pass to Crawford on first down. Tackled by Robinson after a gain of about six yards. This is the first action of the season for Byron Ingram. He joined Monterey's roster back just on May the 8th. With Dello Davis in motion, the pass behind Jones. As the receiver sitting on the ground, kind of putting his hands up like, hey, I was open, and he was. But the pass not quite on target. And now third down for the Monterey offense. Ingram helping Jacoby out on the wall. He's telling him to stay out there. You know, don't come in. He, uh, Ingram's reading the defense. He wanted him to, you know, push back in their back pedals and still give him the ball, may, hopefully making Jacoby create some if he is to catch it. From the 12-yard line, Ingram looking to the right, has Davis catch and run. That'll get a first down out across the 20-yard line. David Highland cuts down the angle to force him into the wall before he can break free. But a nice pickup of about 10 or 11 yards for Monterey and a first down for the steal out to the 21 yard line. Jordan Crawford behind the line trying to set up a screen and London Crawford weaves his way through a couple of guys to pick up six yards on the play. That one a bit of a dangerous proposition, Salt Lake. So you throw it to the high motion man, the quarterback has to turn around and throw it backwards. If anything goes wrong, that's a free ball. Absolutely, and that's where you do the scoop and score. You know, defensive players are familiar with the scoop and score. If you're ever in a position to scoop and score, I'll tell you what, watch those touchdown dances come out. The five-yard gain by Crawford does get Monterey across midfield, just inside the Jacksonville 24. That one high, and Eric McIntosh with a welcome to arena football hit on Jacoby Jones right there. And Jones is shaken up as McIntosh delivered a clean shot to the chest. And not sure exactly what happened to Jones there, though he's getting stretched out. That's it. So we'll step aside, check on Jacoby Jones when we come back. Sharks up 16 to 4 right here on CW17.
Jacoby Jones able to get up and walk off the field somewhat gingerly under his own power. Salih, we were talking during the break. As a former wide receiver, you were no stranger to getting a shot to the ribs like that. Absolutely. You know, sometimes if a quarterback gets hit, you know, being back there in the pocket, the ball happens to be a little too high, or maybe it's just a bad pass, you know. We're exposing our ribs. Being 6'4", we're a big frame, you know. It gives the DB an easy target to hit us, and that's exactly what we saw with Jacoby there. So Jones checks out. Marty Gilliard checks in. London Crawford in motion third down and five for Monterey. And some movement up front. Sharks think it was a false start. We'll see, we'll see what Scott Aronowitz comes up with. False start. Offense, number 58. Five-yard penalty. They're going to get Renee Brisea for a false start there. That brings Jacksonville, or I should say Monterey, back to the original line of scrimmage. It's on 21-yard line. And let's go down to the field, sending down to Reagan. I'm here with Nick Belcher, who scored eight of the 16 Jacksonville points. You know, can we, should we call you Mr. Deuce, or what other nicknames do you have for this week? Uh, Mr. Deuce is fitting, you know, uh, just try to help my team the best way I can, and it's an opportunity for me to put points on the board and, uh, you know, really help our team get that momentum. So, you know, I just do what I do. What do you have that other kickers in the league don't have? Um, I know there's a lot of great kickers in this league, you know, uh, I think we all have a great work ethic, uh, but most of the part, you know, i got a great fan base around me, great fans, great team, so I think that's the main thing right now. All right, Xander and Solly, back up to you. All right, thanks a lot, Reagan, here and there from Nick Belcher. As, she, as Reagan mentioned, eight of the 16 points in tonight's game for the Jacksonville Sharks have been scored by Nick Belcher, and during that, Monterey did pick up a first down, a pass from Byron Ingram to Marty Gilliard, and we talked about him during the open of the broadcast. We talked about it all game long. Nick Belcher, a unique weapon for this Jacksonville team. Right, and like I was saying before in the beginning, you know, kickers don't get a lot of love. But in this game now, you can see how detrimental they are, you know, as far as being a great asset for the team. That one picked up by McIntosh with some running room out across the 20. McIntosh reversing field with Broncos in front. Eric McIntosh at the 20, at the 15, 10, 5. Touchdown, right. Jacksonville. Eric McIntosh, his second pick of the night and a phenomenal end-to-end, sideline-to-sideline return, and Jackson release 22-4. to I'll tell you what, I feel like he's trying to make up for those two non-interceptions he had earlier in the game, right, Zander? I'm sure we'll get a couple of looks at that one. Eric McIntosh was there when it counted as Byron Ingram unleashes that pass a little bit behind his receiver. McIntosh got it, slips away from Marty Gilliard, and then he's off to the races. You look at David Highland racing in front, a caravan of blockers to get things going for Eric McIntosh. You see Dale Pearson and others following him all the way down the field. What more can you say? And the guy we just heard from, Nick Belcher, on for the PAT. Right down the middle for Nick Belcher. Jackson with its biggest lead of the night now. 23 to four is the score with 4.36 to go here in quarter number three. We need to break after that phenomenal return by Eric McIntosh, so we'll step aside. Back in just a moment right here on CW17.
23 to 4 is the score back here in Jacksonville where Eric McIntosh turned the corner and was off to the races. A phenomenal end-to-end -end interception return. And the Sharks now have their biggest lead of the night. 23 to 4, Xander Key and Sale Key here with you. As Nick Belcher is on, he's already dropped a couple of deuces so far tonight. We'll see if he gets a third one. Belcher steps into this one, drills it right down the middle. And there it is yet again. Nick Belcher drops a deuce for the third time tonight. Brought to you, of course, by Amazons, the leader in sanitation. A master class in kicking from Nick Belcher tonight. And Jacksonville now leads 25 to four. Tell you what, the team is relying on him heavily to put some points up there on the board. And as you can see, he's doing, like he said, his job. You gotta think Belcher is angling for yet another NAL Special Teams Player of the Week award. He's already won a couple this season. And so now Monterey gets the football back, down by 21 points. Quick pass from Ingram to Crawford. And Mishai Robinson hangs on and takes down London Crawford by the ankle there. That's right, that's what pit bulls do. Mishai Robinson, the pit bull back there. No fear for Mishai Robinson, the only guy to suit up for the Sharks in every season of Jacksonville's existence. Robinson has done it from the beginning. Jacksonville's all-time leader in picks. Added one to that total tonight. As the Sharks now have four interceptions as a team in the ball game. The flag is down and Marty Gilliard is wide open at the 15-10, five and into the end zone. So hang on. There's a flag down. This time we know for sure that it's not a towel. Monterey celebrating, they think it's a touchdown. Illegal defense, number 43. The penalties decline. Touchdown. And so yeah, illegal yeah. defense is called, I think, on Ray Hodgson, the Mac linebacker. So that's declined, and that's a long touchdown pass from Byron Inger to Marty Gilliard. And Sully, sometimes that happens. The guy breaks free. No defender goes with him. And that was an easy pitch and catch. And Gilliard almost lost the ball there, kind of high-stepping as he bounced against his own helmet, but does hang on and get into the end zone for the Monterey touchdown. Tell you what, you want to hold on to those, especially when they need these points here. 25 to 10, Brandon Rutherford on for the PAT. Crawford puts the ball down, the kick is up and good, so Monterey responds with a touchdown of their own to take the Sharks' lead back down to 14 points. <laughs> 25 to 11, 310 to go here in the third quarter. Back in a moment as you are watching Jacksonville Sharks football right here on CW17.
We're back here in Jacksonville with the unconventional 25 to 11 ball game, Sully. It feels like just a minute ago it was 14 to four. And since then he had a safety, he had a deuce, he had a pick six, another deuce, and then a Monterey touchdown. So a little bit of everything so far tonight. Jacksonville still in good position, up by 14, getting the football back. You'd really like to see the offense get into a bit more of a rhythm. It's been a little weird so far in the second half. They really haven't had the football a whole lot but they've still managed to put up points on the board thanks to Eric McIntosh and Nick Belcher, but maybe a chance for some good field position and perhaps an opportunity for Damian Fleming to engineer a touchdown drive. Absolutely. You want to get those guys up front, you know, with a good rhythm, you know, trying to get, you know, hold the, that defensive down on the on Monterey side. And Rutherford strokes a deuce straight through. So how about that? Another deuce dropped. Courtesy of Amazon's leader in sanitation. And now 25 to 13 is the score. You know, thinking back, Saleh, watching, you know, years of arena football here in Jacksonville, just how many kickoffs at the time went through the slack net, either for touchbacks or, or returns. So it makes sense that these guys were able to hit the deuce on a regular basis, but been tremendous you know you've had three for Belcher and then uh, two for Brandon Rutherford so far and I love it I love that you can count that in the NAL and I'm pretty sure the kickers can do uh, as well you know just scouting uh, the crowd just scanning the crowd I can see Capazzoli one of our old kickers who stopped by uh, definitely a guy that could put him through the uprights as well so the Sharks offense with the team up by 12 now and Fleming loses the handle picks it back up now drops back fires deep a lot of contact, and that one's picked off. That's a pick for Justin Broom. And remember, you can go over the wall and hang on. As long as you hang on to the football, you can be totally into the stands. That's right, Xander. As long as you can keep one of your uh, body limbs in there on that catch, it still counts. Another look at it. Fleming initially recovered from the fumble, threw it down the field, and fans want to contact, but Broom, great job to reach back and pick it off. Theron Lewis was in the area, but didn't really have a chance to make much of a play on it. So just like that, Monterey gets the football back with a chance to make this a one-score game. Gilliard in motion here. Ingram's pass out to Marty Gilliard, who cuts his way inside the 20 yard line for close to first down yardage. And yeah, Monterey is definitely putting up more of a fight here in Jacksonville, Sully. 60 to 21, we talked about, was the score these, the first team, time these two teams matched up. Certainly the Steel motivated, trying to become the first team to knock off Jacksonville here in the NAL. Right, with a little bit of rivalry among, you know, players from players. You know, being with the existing Sharks here in the past and, and, and coming back to the Shark Tank, I'm pretty sure they got a lot to prove, you know. So with that being said, you can see you can see the revenge being placed right here. Ingram under pressure. He goes down. Tremendous from Dale Pearson, who breaks through immediately and takes down Byron Ingram. How about that? There is a flag down. That one in the offensive backfield, generally in the area of a hold. Scott Aronowitz will make the call here momentarily. Dead ball, personal foul, offense, number 47. 10-yard penalty from the succeeding spot. Second down. That's even better than a hold because it's a dead ball foul, a personal foul on Jabari Fletcher, who's playing some fullback there. The Sharks get the sack. Then they back up Monterey 10 more yards. It's going to be second down and forever. So Fletcher comes out. They're going to bring in Nathaniel Dunn once again at fullback. Monterey really doesn't have that traditional arena football fullback on their roster. So Nathaniel Dunn, also the Jack linebacker for this team, Jamari Fletcher, one of the defensive ends. You certainly see guys go both ways in arena football. And we'll keep an eye on the fullback situation. Now Monterey's got to burn a timeout. First charge timeout of the half. Monterey. 
Neither team, Saleh, has really been able to get into a rhythm in the second half on offense at all. The only offensive touchdown to this point in the half has been that broken play bomb to Marty Gilliard. Other than that, both defenses continuing to do the job. And we knew it coming in from the start here. I mean, the D line on both sides, you know, stellar. You know, just putting pressures on the quarterback, trying to make him create something, disrupting the original play, and then leaving it in the hands of their DB. So, as you can see with McIntosh back there, creating havoc, uh, capitalizing on whenever the ball's in the air, you know, that's a big, that's something big we need right now. That was the fifth sack of the year for Dale Pearson. He is second on the team. Jeremiah Price leads the way with seven. On the other side, Javari Fletcher leads the NAL with nine and a half. Joe Sykes had five coming in. He's already got two and a fumble. Defense being showcased all around so far tonight. Second down and 28 for Monterey back just outside its own 15-yard line. Ingram, quick pass out to Gilliard. They'll gain a couple on the play, but hey, if you're Jacksonville, you'll take that. Second down and 28, you'll give up three-yard passes all day. And great read on Charlie Hunt there playing that Jack linebacker, knowing that those three DBs behind him are getting deep, you know, covering those thirds. He's got to have to, you know, come underneath, cover those flats, and really get out there if he's really going to cover that out route. Monterey's got to get all the way down to the Jacksonville seven-yard line. It's third down and 24. Davis in motion. Ingram back to pass over the middle, incomplete. London Crawford got his hands on it. But Misha Robinson was right there, the pit bull to make the hit. It's going to be fourth down and long for Monterey coming up. I think time is going to tick down to the end of the third quarter here, but it looks like Monterey is going to bring on the kicking unit. So once again, Jacksonville gets at least a half stop, and it's going to be quite a long field goal attempt for Brandon Rutherford. When we come back, three quarters complete, 25-13 the score. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back, bringing you the fourth quarter of Sharks football right here on CW17. Back here in Jacksonville on Star Wars night, start of the fourth quarter, 25 to 13 is the score between the homestanding undefeated Jacksonville Sharks and the four and two Monterey Steel who are trying to get closer to that top spot in the NAL. We've taken a look at the standings a couple of times. Jacksonville, of course, leads the league, the only unbeaten team. Lehigh Valley, though, right behind them. Six and one coming in. 
Latest update, the Steelhawks are beating High Country 42 to 21 that game in the third quarter. So if Lehigh Valley continues, that would put the Steelhawks at seven and one. And Jacksonville would need to hold on here and retain sole possession of that top spot. So Brandon Rutherford is on the place kicker for a Monterey. We've seen two deuces dropped by Rutherford in this game. Nick Belcher's got three. This will be a 45 yard attempt, so perhaps within range. Crawford will be the holder. Eric McIntosh is the returner for Jacksonville. There's some movement again along the lines. Monterey seems to think this one is going against the Jacksonville defense. Offside. Defense, number 18. Five-yard penalty. Fourth down. So they get Keith Bowers for the offside. That's going to bring the ball to midfield. And still fourth down at about 17 or 18 yards. I think Rutherford and the field goal unit will stay on. But now it's only a 40-yard attempt. So Rutherford trying to make this kick and then maybe get a chance to get two more points as well on the ensuing kickoff. Rutherford's kick is up, heading toward the uprights, and it's no good. So Jacksonville emerges unscathed from that defensive possession. Early stages here of the fourth quarter, the Sharks offense back out on the field. Again, Sully, with the pick six and the deuces and all that, we haven't seen a whole lot of the Jacksonville offense here in the third, third quarter and second half, but Seems like maybe Damian Fleming is feeling the pass rush a little bit. With Jerry Turner, Joe Sykes, those guys keying it up. The Sharks have been backed up in their own territory a lot, and Fleming's been running around. You'd like to maybe get some quick passes to establish a rhythm here on this drive. Right, and that's what I would do, kind of nickel and dime, get a feel for their defense. I mean, I'm pretty sure they haven't felt a defensive line put that much pressure on them this whole season. I know they played with them before, but as far as today, uh, you know, with Sykes being being on one here, uh, that, those are the muscles that are being flexed that he's not used to, right? So hopefully they can get that under control. He can get acclimated to it and get some rolling. And of course, the Sharks have all league caliber players all the way across the board up front with Ruffins, Harmon, and Lewis. Fleming with a pump fake, looking deep, fires down the field, looking for his man, he's got Mo Williams, and that's a Jacksonville touchdown. So forget the quick passes, a 45-yard bomb from Damian Fleming to Maurice Williams as the Sharks get back into the end zone. Williams is shaken up in the end zone. Looks like he might have taken a hard hit as he went down. Great call on Stout's behalf with that play there. The old hitch and go. Getting that corner to bite, having him separate, and having Fleming just put the ball in his hands. Great job by the pass protection unit. We see here as Broom takes down Williams and maybe went down on that left hand and ribs, yeah, as he was coming to the ground. Falling on that ball doesn't uh, doesn't feel good either, Xander. That may have been a big play, uh, you know, part of that play as well. So Williams is up and he's walking around in the end zone. Now this is interesting because he's also Jacksonville's holder. So if he can't go on this play, the Sharks need a replacement. But they might decide to go for two. Jackson up 31-13, and the offense is on the field, so it looks like they are going to go for two here in this situation. Got Charlie Hunt in the game at receiver. The ball lined up all the way on the far left college hash. Daryl Thompson, the motion man here for Fleming. Looking over the middle, has his man, and there he is, Charlie Hunt in the back of the end zone. He's a two-way guy, does most of his work at Jack Linebacker, but he can run some routes as well as the Sharks get the two-point conversion, go back up by 20, 33 to 13. Talk, talking about a big target, right? 6'4", 6'5", 215, 220. I mean, Fleming, seeing him come across the wall in the back there, I mean, it's, a, it's an easy throw for him. Perfect response there for Jacksonville as the Sharks lead 33-13. to The 
toss from Fleming to Hunt. Two points that the Sharks sorely needed. Back in a moment here on CW17. Back here in Jacksonville, Sharks up 33 to 13. Let's send it down to field level where Reagan is in the Sharks bench. Hey, I got, I'm not a D. I'm not a D. But hold on just a second. We'll get to Reagan in a moment because Nick Belcher dropped his fourth dues of the game. How about that? Belcher doesn't get a PAT attempt, but comes back with two points of his own. And Jacksonville now with its biggest lead of the night. The deuce dropped, courtesy of Amazon's the leader in sanitation. 35-13, Sharks on top. Talking about how important all three aspects of the game are. Right, you got offense, you got defense, and then you got special teams. Obviously now in the NAL, you can see how important it is uh, for the kicker to be a big part of the team, a big part of scoring. Monterey with the ball at its own five yard line. Ingram under center. Under pressure, over the middle, has London Crawford with some running room. Crawford shakes off one tackle, gets taken down by Highland, but not before he gets across midfield to the 24-yard line. That's the size and strength of London Crawford being showcased right there as he just shoved off Eric McIntosh and picked up about 17 yards. Tell you what, that is a big receiver. Talking about another big target there uh, for the steel quarterback. McIntosh had a good angle, but you got to wrap up on a guy like London Crawford. 6'3", 205 at least, as he makes his return to Jacksonville tonight. Ingram going deep, looking for Crawford. It's back, and it's intercepted by Nishai Robinson. His second pick of the game, and the fifth of the game for the Jacksonville Sharks. How about that? The defense has come to play tonight as the pit bull snags another one and Jacksonville takes over. Tell you what, he's Shai Robinson, man. This is a guy that can read routes. He can read it already. He's been a big vet, big time uh, player for a number of years here. I mean, beating the receiver to the ball, as you can see, coming down with that. I mean, that's what he does the best. That's the pit bull. Sharks offense back on when we come back. 35-13, the score right here on CW17.
Attack Dance team's got a reason to celebrate as the Jacksonville Sharks lead 35-13. A defensive showcase so far tonight for Jacksonville. Five interceptions for the Sharks. Xander Keen Saleki with you here at Sale. Just playmaking all over the field for these DBs. Absolutely. I mean, they are getting to the ball. They're catching it at its highest point. We saw that in Highland. You can see Mishai Robinson beating the receiver actually to the spot where the ball is supposed to be. So Damian Fleming and the Jacksonville offense back on the field first and 10 from their own five yard line. Quick pass out to Daryl Thompson. That's a good way to get the drive going. As the Sharks get out near the 20 yard line and now we'll send it down to the bench where Reagan is with a couple of those DBs. All right, I'm here with me, Shy, and Eric, who have both had two interceptions tonight. You know, what do you see out there? Hey, man, we just out there having fun. This, this is what we do. I mean, it's been a part of our lives for some years. Me and Emad, we've been going head to head against each other for a long time, man. It feels good to be out there with my brother. And I heard you're playing with a heavy art tonight. What's going on? Uh, everything's good, man. You know, uh, my father, you know, he just went into the hospital yesterday, and I uh, found out, you know, late. But uh, he'll be doing fine. Uh, he told me before I got off the phone, he said, man, go win the game for me. And I'm just, thank God, I thank my teammates for having my back. And like you say, this right here, man, somebody I looked up to ever since I was a rookie. And it's a pleasure to be out here with him, man. So it's all love. We enjoying it. All right, Xander and Solly, back up to you. All right, thanks a lot, Reagan. You saw David Highland there in the background before the interview as well. Just. This team's having fun. You see that right there, the camaraderie between Misha Robinson and Eric McIntosh. As, uh, as Eric alluded to, these guys have been going head-to-head -head in arena ball for a long time. McIntosh played with the division rival Orlando Predators most recently. Another handoff to Ross, and Derek Ross has some running room. Hurls the man at the 15, 10, 5, and the boss is into the end zone for a Jacksonville touchdown. The second of the night in this one in spectacular fashion as Derek Ross gets in. And I think we all know what's about to happen at midfield. Start it up as the boss mows him down. Talking about a big guy with great feet work, right? Oh my goodness, this guy can run. For how big he is, this bowling ball, big boss Ross, Tell you what, you don't want to be in his way. Number 72 is an eligible receiver. 72 is eligible. Things have escalated quickly here for Jacksonville. Feels like it was 14 to 4 about 20 minutes ago, and now the Sharks up 41-13 with a chance to tack on another. Belcher's kick is up, and he knocks it home. Belcher continues to deliver here for Jacksonville, and now 42 to 13, the Sharks. Up by 29, and you got to think they're well on their way. Coming right back in just a moment. Let's have another look at that tremendous touchdown run by Derek Ross. Gets it off to the right, gets it way past one man, jumps past another, and then he's off to the races with a blocker as well downfield. Derek Ross into the end zone at Jacksonville. On top, 42 to 13. Bowing him down here on CW17.
Lots of smiles on the faces of Shark fans here tonight. Jackson up 42 to 13. Belcher goes for his fifth deuce, and that one misses a little bit wide to the left. Can't be perfect as Monterey will get the ball at the 20 yard line. And another opportunity for Jacksonville's defense to make some more plays. 9.47 to go in the ball game. And it's easy to forget, Sully. This was just a 12 point game at halftime. Jacksonville was up 14 to 2. And since then, it's been all Sharks. Monterey kind of hung in there with that safety and got a deuce of their own. And it was 14 to 4 for a while. And then since then, it's been all Sharks. You can tell, you know, the Sharks are they're sticking with their game plan. Uh, obviously, with Monterey there, giving them some uh, hassle, some challenges, you know, they're still sticking with it. And obviously, the fourth quarter is where we really see what the Sharks are made of. Sharks have owned the second half. They really owned all four quarters this year, but getting the job done so far tonight, trying to finish it off here in the final 9-20. Ball's on the ground and it's free. The Sharks think they have it. And it's in the arms of Jeremiah Price. The officials have not made a signal yet. Price is in the end zone with the football. I think it would have been blown dead anyway. And they're gonna say that Monterey had the ball with a player touchdown by contact before the Sharks ended up getting control of it. It'll go as a loss of about four and a half yards. Second down on the long coming up here for the steal. Take another look at this one. As Ingram just never got a handle on the snap, the ball was around, it was free for a while. And I guess they're gonna say that Dello Davis got that football, but I don't know if he ever had possession of it. But up by 29, Coach Stout's gonna keep the flag in his back pocket. What a play by Charlie Hunt there, the Jack linebacker to break up that second down pass. Great job by Charlie, just reading the quarterback's eyes. You know, the eyes of the quarterback is normally gonna tell where he's gonna throw. Uh, did a great job on that. Most of the time I've seen Charlie get a pick from that, so we might be able to see something here down the road. Third down and 14 from the 16 yard line for Monterey. The Steel need a score in a hurry. Ingram pumps the football, now rolls to the left, fires that one deep, and it's tipped up and almost intercepted by Misha Robinson. I think that was the one time maybe that Robinson's height worked against him there. He had to try to climb the ladder to get that one. I'll tell you what, I've seen Misha climb that wall and jump off it before. I believe that that would be a pick if he, you know, jumps yep. off the wall as long as he starts in the field of play. But the Sharks will take it. It's fourth down and long, trying to just hold serve yet again here on defense. The Steel break the huddle with 12 on the play clock. Gilliard and Crawford head out to the left side. Dello Davis as now Gilliard runs all the way back to the right, and Monterey's got to burn a timeout. Byron Ingram is not happy. The Steel took their time a little bit coming out of the, the huddle, half. and then Monterey. I think Gilliard lined up on the wrong side, and then they just had no chance to get that playoff in time. You know, mistakes this late in the game, especially if you want to come back and compete, is something you got to, you know, you got to fine tune here. I know coach is upset. Receivers over there look confused. Ingram being upset. Hopefully they, they can get it together here. Fourth and long coming right back on CW17.
Back in Jacksonville, 42 to 13 is the score. Halfway through the fourth quarter here in the Shark Tank. Fourth down and long. Maybe the last chance for the Monterey Steel offense to get back in this one. Byron Ingram with the football back to pass over the middle. Has Crawford, but he's well short. Eric McIntosh with the stick. And that's a turnover on downs. Jacksonville takes over. Another big hit by McIntosh. Tell you what, whenever you're in his zone, they better be ready. And London Crawford still has not gotten up after that big hit. Eric McIntosh having a day. Heard from him down on the field with Reagan there on the Sharks bench. McIntosh playing with a, a bit of a personal thing going on. He said his dad was in the hospital, but he talked to his dad before the game, said, hey, I'm all right, go win this one for me. And I'll tell you what, McIntosh is a motivated dude in tonight's game. Crawford is up, walking off under his own power. I think he's just more mad at the result of the play than anything else. As Monterey had a fourth and long, it was a nice pitch and catch, but well short of the line to gain. Good awareness there by Eric McIntosh to lower the boom, if you will, and keep one to Crawford short. Sharks trying to salt this one away and use some clock up 42 to 13 with six and change to go in the ball game. Fleming under pressure gets this one away. That one incomplete. Good job by Damian Fleming there to get rid of the football. He was under heavy pressure. As West Moia and friends were in on there, collapsing the pocket for the Monterey Steel. Great bull rush on West Moia's part there. Getting all the way to the quarterback. Still trying to create havoc. Still trying to help his defensive out. Uh, defense out, you know, back there in the secondary by trying to create some. Talked about it all game long with Moe at Mac linebacker. You got Joe Sykes, Jerry Turner, Jabari Fletcher, guys that have been around arena football for a long time. The Sharks have done the job for the most part, though, up front. Quick pass caught by Mo Williams. First down yardage for Jacksonville. That's exactly what you want if you're the Sharks there because you move the sticks, get yourself closer, but more importantly, you got four more plays at least to burn this clock down here in the final five and a half minutes. That's right, Xander. You get four more downs, you get the opportunity to give it to Big Boss Ross, maybe get a few runs under there, milk the clock a little bit, and then still capitalize by scoring some points some type of way. Jacksonville looking like it'll be on its way to 8-0. The Sharks up 42-13 to here, five minutes to go in the ball game. Fleming dumps it off to Mo Ruffins, and Ruffins can't quite break free. Picks up about three yards. I'll tell you what, among the offensive linemen in arena football, perhaps none does it better than big Mo Ruffins with the ball in his hands, as we've seen now here in his uh, third year with Jacksonville. That time, though, Needed a tiny bit more quickness to truly break free. The defensive lineman came back and got the stop. Still about a three-yard game, though. Big guy, man. You can tell he's got some big mitts on him. You know, all you got to do is just catch a little toss and turn it up. This guy's done it before. He's, he's met the end zone before. Let's be ready to see if he can uh, meet, be there today. Fleming under pressure, steps up, gets hit, but finds a man anyway. Big. Nice pass out there to Lewis. Big hit by West Maui on that play, too. Like we talked about, a chance to burn the clock down because this one's going to be well under four minutes by the time Jacksonville snaps the football again, and it's third and two at about the seven-yard line. Handoff goes to Ross, and he can only get back to the line of scrimmage that time. Ross gets held up by Joe Sykes and company. And we'll see what the Sharks offense does here. A decision for Coach Stout. Though again, Jacksonville can burn this one under three minutes. Offense on the field as Fleming gets the play call.
Bit of a tight formation here for Jacksonville. As Thompson joins the other two receivers on the right side. Fleming pump fakes, loses the football. I think that was a fumble picked up by Monterey. And then a lateral, and then Jacksonville gets the football back. And I believe on a double change of possession, that's going to be a first down for Jacksonville. That's right, Xander. Trying to make something happen there. Obviously, it didn't work out the way they wanted it to. A great job for Jacksonville jumping back on that ball and getting it back. Like you said, it's another set of first down. First As down. you see there, Jabari Fletcher from behind gets the fumble picked up by Broom. But then just trying to lateral and make something happen. And the ball bounced into the arms of Daryl Thompson. And again, when there's a double change of possession, it doesn't matter if you get back to the, the line to gain or not. If the offense gets the football Ruling back like that, then they get a first the down, offense. you know, where the play stops. The defense and a backward pass. There we go. That first was recovered back from by the, the offense. Offense. First down, Jacksonville. Only four seconds on the play clock for Jacksonville. Fleming hurrying the offense up. They get the play off as Fleming tosses it deep down the left side. That one incomplete. Flag wants a the crowd wants a penalty flag on the DB Justin Broom, but the Sharks themselves don't look too upset. And again, the incomplete pass not as consequential here because outside of a minute, the clock is still going to run no matter what. And just watching that route is a little hitch and go up the wall, but I tell you, it's tough when you got a DB that squeezes you off that hitch into that go to the wall. It's hard to fight through, and you know sometimes or most of the time. The ref lets that play. Yeah, tough on the short side of the field there. Compared to the touchdown, similar route on the other side of the field for Bill Williams, he was able to break free. That time, though, the Sharks don't get the playoff. You like the idea of using all of the play clock, but Delay you do want to make sure you Offense, get it off. 17. And that time, Fleming penalty. couldn't second quite down. get the snap off in time. So it'll be second down at 15, but two minutes on the clock. Sharks will be back on the road next week as they take on the Corpus Christi Rage and then back home for three straight to close out the regular season. So with a win tonight, Jacksonville would make it through the first two-thirds of the NAL schedule completely untarnished. Fleming under pressure steps up and can't escape. Ball's on the ground, and it's still loose. West Mawia got the sack, and it's still on the ground. No signal yet as the officials blow the play dead. A lot happened here on this play, Xander. Let's see what they, uh, what they come Holding up with. Offense, number 72. The penalty is declined. Result of the play is a recovered fumble by the defense. First down. So they do say the Monterey recovers the fumble, and the steal will get a first down from about the Jacksonville 15-yard line. So, hey, never say never. It's arena football. You got the deuce. Anything can happen. And, hey, Monterey does have the ball now at the 15. So, if you're Jacksonville's defense, I think the key here, Sale, is to not give up a quick score. Make the steal earn it if they're going to get in the end zone because Monterey's only got one timeout. So, you figure they might get one, maybe two plays off before the one-minute timeout. And you maybe want to try and have them use more of that clock if they're going to get in the end zone. That's right, because if they score too fast, they can come back, hit a deuce, right? Put the defense back out there, still get the ball back, and try to create as much point advantage as possible. Quick pass to Davis behind the line, a tunnel screen, gets a few yards on the play. And that should take us to the one-minute timeout. Monterey will have about a second down and five when play resumes. The one-minute timing rules are in effect. Monterey has one timeout, and Jacksonville has two timeouts. Back for the final 60 seconds of the contest here. Jacksonville up 42 to 13. We'll be right back here on CW17.
ready for the final minute of action here in Jacksonville. The Sharks on top of the Monterey Steel, 42 to 13. The Steel, though, have a second down and five from about the 12 yard line. Pass behind the line to Crawford, trying to force his way forward. And he gets a couple on the play. Trying to snap the ball there behind the line of scrimmage, get it to him early. That way he can cre create something there. But importantly for Jacksonville, Crawford was taken down in the field of play, not along the wall. So the clock does not stop. And now taking under 40 seconds left. Monterey only has one timeout. The Sharks scores up by 29 points. Ingram fires off to the left looking for Gilliard and he's got it. Nice dive and catch there by Marty Gilliard as the steel moved the sticks and Monterey is going to call its final timeout. Third and final charge. Only 15 seconds half. left, Salé. Pretty Monterey. safe to say at this point that Jacksonville will move to 8 0. Monterey will drop to 4 and 3. And how about that? Coming off the bye week with a motivated steel team coming in to handle your business and kind of weather some ups and downs offensively and really just turn it on in the second half. Absolutely, and that's what you want to do. You want to, you know, you, know, you want to keep that stretched all the way extending into the third and fourth quarter. Still have your game plan going and still execute. So obviously the Sharks show that. That's why they're tremendously awesome. <laughs> In my book, I mean, you know, being undefeated, that's what great teams do. 13 seconds left for Monterey. They've got a first and goal from the six yard line. Ingram pump fake still in the pocket fires deep toward the back and that one is into the open area over everything seven ticks left on the clock and now a second down and goal Darwin Pittman got the start for Monterey. Byron Ingram came in in the second half, did throw a long touchdown pass to Marty Gilliard, the only touchdown of the night for the steal, but too little too late for Monterey as Jacksonville's defense has turned it up all game long, five picks. As Ingram fires it deep to Crawford, that one deflected by David Island. The disrespect on that one to just kind of volleyball spike it down and not even go for the pick. Two seconds left for Monterey. So this is definitely a big win for the Sharks here, Xander. I mean, you know, this puts them up another win, 8-0, undefeated. Obviously, they flex some muscles they haven't flexed in a long time against a good defensive line here. So now they get to go back, watch film, still fine-tune, still be able to, you know, keep that momentum going into next week and, and, and hopefully for, a, for more of an undefeated season here. Time expires. Ingram fires deep toward the corner. That went into the steel bench, and that'll do it as the Jacksonville Sharks hold their ground. And hold on, there's a flag down. So pause that thought because if, a de if it's a defensive penalty, then... Personal foul, roughing the passer. Defense, number 18, half the distance to the goal. Automatic first down, we'll play one on time down. So, there's an untimed down after the roughing the passer. A first and goal again for Monterey. And a chance for the Steel to get in the end zone. The only drama left is what the final score will be. Time's expired, and Monterey's got one more crack at it. Ingram to the right, looking for Gilliard. It's tipped up and knocked down by David Island. Bit of a statement there by the secondary, Saleh, to just keep them off the board overall and not let Monterey get in. And we talked about it the whole pregame. Defense, defense, defense. The top two scoring defenses. Hey, 
Monterey did a pretty good job, but the story for me tonight was the play of the Jacksonville Sharks defense. Absolutely, and you got to give, give credit to those DBs back there that the Sharks have playing in McIntosh uh, with Highland and I, obviously Nisai, all of them pulling up with an interception. A lot of handshakes down in the field. We've talked about it all game. Lots of guys on both teams know each other. Lots of guys have played here in Jacksonville before, and they're playing for Monterey now. You see Coach Stout there hugging Jabari Fletcher, some of the other players for this Monterey squad. So the first year of the Mark Stout era is going phenomenally well for Jacksonville. Coach Stout has the Sharks out to an 8-0 lead in the NAL standings. Jacksonville remains on top. Lehigh Valley was well on its way to a win themselves. So the Sharks will be just one game up with four games to play. And Jacksonville and Lehigh Valley do not play again in the regular season. That was the closest game of the year as the Sharks and Steelhawks were tied at one point late in the third quarter, I believe. But they won't see each other until the playoffs yet again. So kind of interesting how they've only matched up once this season. So let's send it down to the field where Reagan is down there with Coach Stout. I'm here with Sharks head coach Mark Stout. And, you know, what's it like to be 8-0 tonight? Well, it's a good ending. Uh, tough night offensively. we got to fix some things and get better. That's a good football team. They came out and fought real hard. Tonight, the defense held, held the court tonight. So that's great for our defense. You all turned it around second half of the offense. What changed for you? Yeah, just, you know, we just got to settle down. We're, you know, we're, we're making too many little mental errors. We just got to settle down and play football. Mark Sally up to you. All right, thanks a lot, Reagan. You heard there from Coach Stout, Saleh, where, you know, the offense wasn't necessarily on point all game, and sometimes that's a pretty good thing. When you can have those teaching moments, things to correct in the film room, it helps you not get too high even though you're 8-0. You're absolutely right, Xander. I mean, this just gives you an example how well-rounded the Sharks are. If offense isn't working well, defense is there. And you know what? especially with the special teams and Nick Belcher. This guy has brought a lot of points already tonight, coming off last week, being the player of the game or whatnot. But it lets you know how important it is with all three to work to be a successful team. And really, the Sharks have just handled everything that the NAL has thrown at them so far this season. You see the teams there circled up, sharing a moment. The camaraderie on and off the field is something that you know, is something you know well, Saleh, just the, the relationships you build with guys, you know, playing this game, playing it for the love of the game like you did yourself for, for several years. And, you know, I'm sure Monterey would have liked to come in here and knock off the Sharks. And again, here tonight, the story was that Jacksonville Sharks defense as we're ready to take a look at some of those interceptions as the Sharks racked up five of them in tonight's ball game. And here we go, it started early, Mishai Robinson going deep and acting like the receiver there for that first one. Robinson, the only guy to play for the Sharks in all eight seasons of their existence as a franchise. The Pitbull with two interceptions in tonight's game, one of our players of the game, a tremendous effort by the Jacksonville defense, and then there it is. Eric McIntosh steps in, breaks a tackle of Marty Gilliard, and then gets a block, runs all the way around the edge. That was his second pick of the game, a pick six. That might give McIntosh the edge over Mishai and the player of the week uh, honors, but great job by the defense. And let's send it back down to the field where Reagan is with Sharks quarterback Damian Fleming. I'm here with Damian Fleming. What's it mean for you to be the quarterback of an 8-0 no team? Um, it means a lot. I mean, we have a long way to go. I mean, today we came out slow. The defense was able to have our back through. Uh, a lot of miss, mishaps we had on the on offensive side. I mean, it's a long season, and we still have a lot of work to do. What did you do to change it up at a half, come back with a lot more energy? Um, just keep your composure. I mean, it looked like kind of coming out, everyone was jittery in the beginning. But, I mean, we knew big plays are coming eventually. So, I mean, we just got to keep working at it and just erase the bad plays, but just keep going. All right, Xander and Solly, back up to you. 
All right, thanks a lot, Reagan. Damian Fleming now 3-0 as a starter for Jacksonville. Saleh, just some final thoughts on tonight's game. Things to build on, but ultimately the Sharks kept it rolling. Absolutely. Things to build on here. You know, the team hasn't flexed muscles have, that they're flexed before with, with the defensive line. Pressure. Having Fleming really think if he's going to leave the pocket, if he's going to stay in, take a hit. But um, a lot of great things happening tonight. I'm pretty sure they're going to see it on film and have that continue for next week. So the Sharks move to 8-0, and they'll have a bit of a long rest, eight days until the next game, as they travel down deep into the heart of Texas to take on the Corpus Christi Rage. We'll be back in a few weeks when the Steel come back here on June 17th. But don't forget to check out all the Jacksonville Sharks action here at the Shark Tank. 904-621-0700 is that ticket number. See you back here in two weeks as the Sharks will host the Dayton Wolfpack on June 3rd. For Reagan Bailey and Salt Lake Key, I am Xander Keen. Thank you so much for tuning in to tonight's broadcast. I want to thank everybody behind the scenes getting us on the air and looking and sounding great. 42-13, to 13, the final. We'll see you in a few weeks as the Steel come back for our next broadcast here on CW17.